booking a luxurious London hotel, and planning a family trip. Hi Jennifer, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. Hi Michael, sure. I love good news. What's happening? I've just booked a five-day stay at a luxurious hotel in London for our family vacation. That's fantastic, Michael. Which hotel have you chosen? I've booked us into the Ritz. It's one of the most luxurious hotels in London. Wow, that's quite impressive. What amenities does the hotel offer? The Ritz offers a variety of amenities. They have spacious rooms, a fitness center, a wellness spa, and even a Michelin-starred restaurant. That sounds wonderful. When are we going? We're scheduled to leave next month. We'll have five full days to explore London. That sounds exciting. Do you have any plans for our trip? I've been thinking about it. London has so many attractions. We could visit the British Museum, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, and of course, the London Eye. I've always wanted to see the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. Can we include that in our itinerary? Absolutely, I think that's a great idea. We can also explore some of the city's beautiful parks like Hyde Park and Regent's Park. Don't forget about shopping. I'd love to visit Harrods and the markets at Covent Garden. Of course. Shopping is a must. We can also explore London's theatre district. Maybe we could catch a show at the West End. I'd love that. I've heard that the food scene in London is amazing too. Yes, it's very diverse. We can try everything from traditional English food to international cuisine. This is sounding like a dream vacation, Michael. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Jennifer. I think it's going to be a trip to remember. Thank you for organizing this, Michael. I'm sure the kids will love it too. I hope so, Jennifer. I want it to be a special experience for all of us. I'm sure it will be, Michael. Thank you for making this happen. You're welcome, Jennifer. I'm excited to share this experience with you and the kids. Me too, Michael. I can't wait. Let's start packing then. Absolutely, let the countdown begin. Preparing for a swimming lesson. Hi Mary, how are you today? Hello James, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I heard you have a swimming lesson this weekend. Yes, that's right. I'm excited, but also a bit nervous. That's completely normal, Mary. Do you know what you need to bring for the lesson? Well, I guess I need a swimsuit and a towel, right? Yes, those are essential. Also, it's a good idea to bring goggles and a swim cap if you have them. They protect your eyes and hair from the chlorine in the pool. I see. I will make sure to bring them. How should I prepare myself for the lesson? Try to eat a light meal about one to two hours before the lesson. You don't want to swim on an empty stomach, but you also don't want to feel too full. That makes sense. What should I expect during the lesson? During your first lesson, the instructor will probably teach you some basic skills, like floating, kicking, and maybe some basic strokes. What if I feel scared or nervous in the water? It's okay to feel that way. Just remember, your instructor will be there to help you. And it's important to tell them if you're feeling scared or uncomfortable. I understand. Is there anything I should do after the lesson? Yes, after the lesson, it's a good idea to stretch your muscles and drink plenty of water. Also, you should rinse off in the shower to remove any chlorine from your skin and hair. Great advice, James. Thanks for your help. You're welcome, Mary. 
swimming is a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. I'm sure you'll do great. I hope so. I'll remember all your tips. Thanks again. No problem at all, Mary. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your swimming lesson. Thank you, James. Have a nice day. Being a contestant on a quiz show. Hi Patricia, I heard you're going to be on a quiz show. Is that true? Hello John, yes, that's correct. I'm both excited and nervous. That sounds like an amazing experience. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got selected? Of course. First, I had to fill out an online application. Then, I was invited to take a test to assess my general knowledge. After passing the test, I had an interview with the show's producers. They must have liked me, because I was selected to be a contestant. Wow, that sounds like quite a process. You must be very knowledgeable. How are you preparing for the show? I've been reading a lot and watching previous episodes of the show to get a feel for the type of questions they might ask. I've also been practicing with some quiz games at home. That's a good strategy. What kind of topics do you think you'll be asked about? Quiz shows usually cover a wide range of topics, such as history, science, culture, and current events. I'm trying to brush up on all these areas as much as I can. That's smart. I'm sure you'll do great. Is there anything you're particularly worried about? I'm a bit worried about the timed nature of the show. I tend to take my time to think about questions, but on the show, I'll need to respond quickly. That's a fair concern, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Remember, it's just as much about the experience as it is about winning. You're absolutely right, John. I'm mainly doing this for the fun of it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Definitely, and who knows? You might even win a big prize. That would be wonderful, but even if I don't, I'm sure I'll have a great time. That's the spirit, Patricia. Do you know when your episode will air? Not yet, but I'll let you know as soon as I do. I can't wait to watch you on TV. Best of luck, Patricia. Thank you, John. Your support means a lot to me. You're welcome, Patricia. Enjoy your time on the show. I certainly will, John. Thanks again for your kind words. My pleasure, Patricia. Take care. You too, John. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Patricia. Can't wait to see you on the show. My little house and my big family. Hi, how was your day? Hi, my day was good. How about you? I'm good too. I was thinking about my small house and big family. Oh, that sounds interesting. How many people are in your family? There are 10 people in my family, including me. Wow, that's a big family. Who are the members of your family? I have my parents, three brothers, two sisters, and my grandparents. That's nice. Do you all live in the same small house? Yes, we do. It's a bit crowded, but we love being together. I can imagine. What do you like most about having a big family? I like that there is always someone to talk to and play with. That's true. Do you have any family traditions? Yes, we have a big family dinner every Sunday night. That sounds lovely. What kind of food do you usually have at the dinner? We have different dishes every time, but my mom's pasta is always a favorite. I love pasta too. Do you help with the cooking? Yes, sometimes I help my mom in the kitchen. I like to learn new recipes. 
That's great. Do your siblings help as well? Yes, we all take turns helping with the cooking and cleaning. It's nice that everyone contributes. Do you have any pets? Yes, we have a dog named Max. He's like another family member. I love dogs. How do you manage to take care of him with so many people in the house? We all take turns walking him and feeding him. It's not too hard. That's good to hear. I think having a big family is wonderful. I agree. I'm very lucky to have them. How about your family? My family is smaller, but I still love them very much. That's great. Family is important, no matter the size. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you about your family. Thank you. I enjoyed our conversation too. Have a great day. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you later. Human Anatomy Hi Bob, I want to learn about human anatomy. Can you help me with that? Hello Alice, sure. I'd be happy to help. Human anatomy is the study of the body and its parts. That sounds interesting. What are the main parts of the human body? The human body has many parts. Some of the main ones are the head, arms, legs, and the torso, which is the middle part of the body. I see. Can you tell me about the head? Of course. The head has the brain, which is the control center of the body. It also has the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. What about the arms and legs? The arms and legs are also called limbs. The arms have hands at the end, and the legs have feet. We use our arms and hands to hold things and our legs and feet to walk. That's clear. And what's inside the torso? The torso contains many important organs, such as the heart, lungs, and stomach. The heart pumps blood, the lungs help us breathe, and the stomach helps us digest food. I've heard about bones. What can you tell me about them? Bones are the hard parts that make up the skeleton, which gives the body its shape and support. There are 206 bones in an adult human body. Wow, that's a lot of bones. How do the parts of the body work together? The different parts of the body work together like a team. For example, the muscles help us move, the heart and lungs provide oxygen and nutrients, and the brain sends signals to control everything. That's amazing. How can I learn more about human anatomy? You can read books, watch videos, or take a class to learn more about human anatomy. It's a fascinating subject. Thank you, Bob. I'll look for more information. I appreciate your help. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Enjoy learning about human anatomy. Thanks, Bob. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Take care. Gas station. Hello. How are you today? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I need to go to the gas station to get some fuel for my car. Do you know where the nearest one is? Yes, there's a gas station just two blocks away from here. Turn right at the next intersection and you'll see it. Great, thank you. I'm new to this area, so I'm still learning where everything is. No problem, happy to help. Do you need directions to any other places around here? Actually, I'm also looking for a grocery store to buy some food. Do you know where I can find one? Sure. There's a big supermarket just five minutes away by car. After you leave the gas station, continue straight for two blocks, then turn left. 
You'll see the supermarket on your right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome. If you need any more help, feel free to ask. I've lived in this neighborhood for a long time, so I know my way around. That's very kind of you. I will definitely ask if I need any more assistance. Are there any good restaurants around here that you recommend? Oh, there are many. If you like pizza, there's a fantastic pizza place just across the street from the supermarket. They have the best pizza in town. I love pizza. I'll have to try it out. What about a good place for coffee or breakfast? There's a cozy little cafe a few blocks away from the pizza place. They have great coffee and delicious pastries. It's the perfect spot for breakfast or an afternoon snack. That sounds lovely. I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks for all the recommendations. My pleasure. Enjoy exploring the neighborhood. I will. Have a great day. You too. Good luck with your errands. Unveiling the Urban Canvas, Graffiti in the Metro and the City Hey Emma, how's your day going? Hi Jack, I'm doing well, thanks. And you? I'm doing fine. Did you notice the new graffiti in the Metro? Yes, I did. It's quite eye-catching. What are your thoughts on graffiti, Jack? Well, Emma, I think graffiti is an intriguing form of art. It gives artists a chance to express themselves in public spaces. I agree, Jack. It can certainly add color and character to otherwise dull spaces, like a metro station. However, isn't it considered illegal in many places? That's a good point, Emma. Yes, unauthorized graffiti is often viewed as vandalism and is illegal. It can lead to fines or even imprisonment. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? On one hand, it's a creative expression, on the other hand, it's seen as a crime. Absolutely, it's a fine line between art and vandalism. What do you think about graffiti being used to address social issues? I think it can be a powerful tool for raising awareness and sparking conversations about important topics. I've seen some graffiti pieces in the city that depict global warming, for instance. Yes, it's amazing how a piece of art can convey such powerful messages. Graffiti can definitely be a voice for the voiceless. True. But there should be some rules, I guess. Artistic expression shouldn't harm public or private property. I completely agree, Emma. Maybe cities can designate specific areas for artists to create their graffiti. That way, it can be appreciated without causing any harm. That sounds like a balanced solution, Jack. It's a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise, Emma. Conversations like this make me appreciate the complex beauty of our urban landscapes. Indeed, Jack. I look forward to more enlightening conversations with you. Have a great day. Day of the Dead Festival in Mexico Hi Mary. I recently heard about a unique festival in Mexico called the Day of the Dead. Do you know anything about it? Hi James. Yes, I do. The Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos in Spanish, is a traditional Mexican holiday that celebrates and remembers loved ones who have passed away. That sounds interesting. How do they celebrate it? It's a colorful and festive event. Families create altars, or ofrendas, in their homes to honor their deceased loved ones. These altars are decorated with flowers, candles, photos of the deceased, and their favorite foods and drinks. It sounds like a beautiful tribute. Is there any significance to the items placed on the altar? Yes, there is. Each item has a specific meaning. For example, marigold flowers or sempasakil are believed to guide the spirits to the altar. 
Candles are lit to welcome them, and the food is an offering for the spirits. That's quite meaningful. Are there any other customs associated with the Day of the Dead? Absolutely. One popular tradition is the creation of sugar skulls or calicas. These are colorful, decorated skulls made of sugar, which symbolize death and rebirth. I've seen pictures of those. They're very vibrant and artistic. Are there any special foods or drinks during this festival? Yes, there are. Panda muerto, or bread of the dead, is a sweet bread that's commonly made for this occasion. Also, a drink called atoll, which is a traditional hot corn and masa drink, is often consumed. It's fascinating how the Day of the Dead seems to mix celebration with remembrance. Is this festival only celebrated in Mexico? The Day of the Dead is primarily a Mexican holiday, but it's also recognized in other cultures around the world, especially those with a large Mexican community. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, has even recognized it as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. That's amazing. I'd love to experience the Day of the Dead Festival someday. It seems like a beautiful way to remember and honor our loved ones. I agree, James. It's a unique celebration that embraces death as a natural part of life, which is quite different from many other cultures. Thank you for sharing, Mary. I've learned so much about the Day of the Dead today. You're welcome, James. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Will do, Mary. Thank you again, and have a great day. You too, James. Take care. The Running of the Bulls Festival in Spain Hello Mary, I've heard you went to Spain last summer. Did you by any chance attend the Running of the Bulls Festival? Hi James, yes, I did. It's a unique and exciting event that happens in the city of Pamplona every year. That's interesting. Can you tell me more about the festival? What exactly happens there? Sure, I'd love to. The festival is called San Fermin, and the running of the bulls is just one part of it. It's an event where people run in front of a group of bulls that have been let loose on a course of a sectioned-off subset of the town streets. That sounds dangerous. Why do people do it? It's a tradition that dates back to the 14th century. Initially, it was a practical thing, the bulls had to be moved from the city outskirts to the bullring where they would be fought in the afternoon. Youngsters would jump among them to show off their bravado. Oh, I see. So, it turned into a festival over time. What else happens during the festival? Apart from the bull runs, there are many other activities like parades, fireworks, and traditional sports. It's a week-long festival, and the whole city is decorated with red and white, which are the colors of the event. That sounds like quite a spectacle. But, aren't there any safety concerns during the running of the bulls? Absolutely, it can be very dangerous, and there have been injuries and even deaths in the past. Before the event starts, there are safety instructions given, and you must be over 18 to participate. It's also advised not to participate if you have been drinking. That makes sense. It's important to be careful. Did you participate in the running? No, I didn't. I watched from a safe distance. It was thrilling enough just to be a spectator. I can imagine. It must have been an unforgettable experience. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the festival? Just that it's a huge part of the local culture. The people of Pamplona take great pride in hosting the San Fermin Festival. While the running of the bulls might be the most famous event, the entire festival is a celebration of the city's heritage. It sounds incredible, Mary. I'd love to see it for myself someday. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome, James. If you ever decide to go, I'm sure you'll have a great time.
Just remember to stay safe. Holiday. Hi, do you have any plans for the holiday? Yes, I'm going on a trip with my family. What about you? I'm going to visit my grandparents in the countryside. Where are you going? We're going to the beach. I'm excited to swim and play in the sand. That sounds like fun. What are you going to pack for the trip? I'm going to bring my swimsuit, some sunscreen, and a hat to protect my face from the sun. That's a good idea. What else are you going to do on the trip? We're going to go to some restaurants and try different kinds of food. I also want to go on a boat ride. That sounds like a great adventure. What do you like to do on holidays? I like to relax and spend time with my family. What about you? I like to read books and go for walks. Thanks for talking about your holiday plans. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Gas station. Hi, Bob. How are you today? Hello, Alice. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I wanted to ask you, how do you buy fuel at a gas station in English? It's quite easy, Alice. When you go to a gas station, you can simply say, I would like to buy some fuel, please. I see. And how do I ask for a specific amount of fuel or money? You can say, Could I have $20 worth of gas, please? Or, Please give me 10 liters of fuel. That's clear. What if I want to pay with a credit card or cash? You can ask, Can I pay with my credit card? Or, Do you accept cash? Great. And if I need help at the gas station, what can I say? You can ask, Excuse me, could you help me with the pump, please? Thanks, Bob. That's very helpful. What about when I need to find a gas station? What should I ask? You can ask someone, Excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest gas station is? Perfect. And if I want to know if the gas station has a restroom or a store? You can ask, does this gas station have a restroom, or is there a store here? Thank you, Bob. You're a great help. Do you have any other tips for me? Just remember to be polite and use, please, and, thank you, when asking for help or making requests. And don't worry, most people are happy to help. Thanks a lot, Bob. I feel more confident now. I'll keep practicing. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your English. Thank you, Bob. Have a nice day. You too, Alice. Take care. At the bakery. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too. Do you want to go to the bakery today? Yes, I would love to. What do you want to eat there? I want to eat a chocolate cake and drink a milky coffee. What about you? I would like to have a grape cookie with a cup of coffee. That sounds nice. We can also meet our friends there. Yes, it's a great idea. We can talk and have fun together. Do you know if anyone has a birthday soon? I think Sarah's birthday is next week. We can celebrate it at the bakery. That's perfect. We can surprise her with a cake and a small party. She will be very happy. Let's invite our other friends too. Yes, let's make a list of who we want to invite. We can invite Tom, Lucy, and Mike. Do you want to invite anyone else? Let's also invite Emma and Sam. They are good friends with Sarah. Great, I will call them and tell them about the surprise party. 
Thank you. Let's meet at the bakery at 4 p.m. today. Perfect. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you. Gas Station 2 Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. Are you at the gas station now? Yes, I am. I need to get some gas for my car. What kind of gas do you need? I need petrol. My car uses petrol. How much petrol does your car need? I think it needs about 30 liters. How much does petrol cost now? It costs $1.5 per liter. That's not too expensive. No, it's not. I'm happy with the price. How do you pay for the petrol? I use my credit card. It's very easy. That's good. Do you like your car? Yes, I do. It's a nice car. What color is your car? My car is red. Red is a nice color. Yes, I like it a lot. Do you drive to work every day? No, I take the bus to work. Why do you take the bus? It's cheaper and better for the environment. That's true. How long does it take to get to work? It takes about 30 minutes. That's not too long. No, it's not. I can read a book or listen to music on the bus. That sounds nice. What time do you go to work? I go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. What time do you finish work? I finish work at 5 o'clock in the evening. Do you like your job? Yes, I do. I have a good boss and nice co-workers. That's great. What do you do for fun? I like to watch movies and play soccer. I like to watch movies, too. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie is The Lion King. I like that movie, too. It's a good story. Yes, it is. Do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie is Toy Story. That's a fun movie. I like it, too. I'm glad you like it. Do you have a favorite soccer team? Yes, I do. My favorite team is Barcelona. I like Barcelona, too. They play good soccer. Yes, they do. It's fun to watch them play. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you. Yes, it was nice talking to you, too. Have a great day. You too, have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye. A discussion on the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China. Hello Mary, have you ever heard about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China? Hi James, I've heard about it, but I don't know much. Can you tell me more? Absolutely, it's one of the biggest winter festivals in the world. It takes place in Harbin, a city in northeastern China, every year. It usually starts in January and lasts for about a month, but the exact dates can vary depending on the weather. That sounds interesting. What happens during the festival? The festival features massive ice and snow sculptures. Artists from all over the world come to create these sculptures. Some of them are small, but others can be as tall as a building. Wow, that must be a sight to see. How do they make these sculptures? 
They use blocks of ice that they take from the Songhua River, which freezes over in the winter. For the snow sculptures, they pack snow into blocks. Then, they carve these blocks into different shapes. That's fascinating. What else can visitors do at the festival? Besides admiring the sculptures, visitors can enjoy ice lantern shows, ice skating, and other winter activities. There are also ice hotels where you can stay. Ice hotels? That sounds cold. Yes, it does. But don't worry, the beds are made of ice but are covered with warm reindeer skins, blankets, and sleeping bags. That's a relief. Is there anything special about the festival's location, Harbin? Indeed, Harbin is known as the Ice City. It's famous for its extremely cold winters, which makes it the perfect place for this festival. Harbin also has strong influences from Russia because it's close to the Russian border. You can see this influence in the city's architecture and food. That's very interesting. I'd love to go there someday. It's definitely worth a visit. Just remember to dress warmly. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for telling me about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival, James. I learned a lot. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too, Mary. Take care. La Tomatina Festival, Spain Hi Mary, have you ever heard of the La Tomatina Festival in Spain? Hello James, yes, I have. It's a unique festival where people throw tomatoes at each other, right? Exactly. It takes place in a small town called Bunal, near Valencia in Spain, on the last Wednesday of August every year. It's known as the world's biggest food fight. That sounds so unusual. But why tomatoes? It's a tradition that started in the 1940s. There are different stories about how it began. One story says it started when some local boys threw tomatoes at a parade as a prank. And now it's a big festival. How many people participate in this event? Thousands of people, both locals and tourists, participate every year. They throw over a hundred metric tons of overripe tomatoes. Wow, that's a lot of tomatoes. Is there any rule to follow during this tomato fight? Yes, there are a few rules. For example, participants must squash the tomatoes before throwing to avoid injuring others. And the throwing ends after one hour. It must be quite a sight to see. What happens after the fight? After the tomato fight, the town's public cleaning services come into action. They use fire trucks to spray down the streets, with water provided from a Roman aqueduct. It sounds like a fun and exciting festival. Are there any other activities or events associated with La Tomatina? Yes, there are. The week leading up to the tomato fight is filled with parades, fireworks, and cooking contests. There's even a paella cooking contest, which is a traditional Valencian rice dish. I'm intrigued. I might want to visit Spain to experience this festival. How can one participate? You need to buy a ticket to participate in the tomato fight. The town began limiting participation and charging a fee to control the crowd size for safety reasons. That's understandable. I'll definitely look into it. Thank you for telling me about this unique festival, James. You're welcome, Mary. I'm sure you'd have a great time if you go. Just remember to bring clothes you don't mind getting dirty. Absolutely, James. Thanks for the advice. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Anytime, Mary. If you have any more questions or need more travel advice, feel free to ask. Thanks a lot, James. Have a great day. Discussing the Holy Festival in India 
Hello Mary, how are you today? Hi James, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I was reading about the Holy Festival in India. Do you know anything about it? Oh yes, Holy. It's an amazing festival. It's also known as the Festival of Colors. Festival of Colors? That sounds interesting. Why is it called that? Well, it's called the Festival of Colors because people throw colored powders and water at each other. The streets become a canvas of vibrant colors. That sounds like fun. Is there a reason for this tradition? Absolutely. The throwing of colors is a way to celebrate the arrival of spring and the victory of good over evil. It's also a way to show love and togetherness. That's wonderful. When does this festival take place? Holy is usually celebrated in March, at the end of winter and the beginning of spring. The exact date varies as it is based on the lunar calendar. I see. What else happens during Holy? The night before Holy, people gather for a bonfire to celebrate the victory of good over evil. This is called Holy Kadahan. There's also a lot of singing and dancing. That sounds exciting. Is there any special food or drink associated with Holi? Indeed, there are. One popular food is gajia, which is a sweet dumpling filled with a mixture of sweetened koya and dried fruits. There's also a traditional drink called dandai. That's fascinating. It sounds like a very joyous celebration. Yes, it is. It's a time when people come together to celebrate, forgetting their differences. It's a beautiful display of unity and joy. I'd love to experience Holi one day. It seems like a unique cultural experience. It certainly is, James. I hope you get the chance to experience it. It's something you'll never forget. Thanks for sharing, Mary. I've learned so much about Holi today. You're welcome, James. I'm glad I could share something about this wonderful festival. Thanks, Mary. Have a great day. You too, James. Take care. Twenty must-know questions and answers for your luxurious stay at the Hotel City. Hello, do you have any rooms available for tonight? Yes, we do have rooms available. Would you like a single or a double room? Is breakfast included in the price? Yes, a continental breakfast is included in the room price. What are the check-in and check-out times? Check-in is from 3 p.m. and check-out is by 11 a.m. Do you offer room service? Yes, we offer 24-hour room service. Is there Wi-Fi in the rooms? Yes, all rooms have free high-speed Wi-Fi. Do you have a gym in the hotel? Yes, we have a fully equipped gym that's open 24-7 for our guests. What type of amenities do you provide in the rooms? All rooms come with a flat-screen TV, mini-fridge, kettle, hairdryer, and toiletries. Is there a restaurant in the hotel? Yes, we have a fine dining restaurant and a cafe in our hotel. Can I have an extra bed in the room? Yes, we can arrange an extra bed for a small additional fee. Is the hotel pet-friendly? I'm sorry, but our hotel doesn't allow pets. Is there parking available at the hotel? Yes, we provide complimentary parking for our guests. Do you offer laundry service? Yes, we do offer laundry and dry cleaning services. Is there a spa in the hotel? Yes, our hotel has a luxurious spa offering a variety of treatments. Can you arrange a taxi to the airport? Absolutely, we can arrange a taxi for you. 
What is the cancellation policy? You can cancel your booking free of charge up to 48 hours before your check-in date. Do you provide any special services for honeymooners? Yes, we offer a special package that includes a romantic dinner, champagne, and a room upgrade if available. Are there any tourist attractions near the hotel? Yes, we're conveniently located near several popular tourist spots. Can I request a room with a view? Certainly, we can arrange a room with a view, depending on availability. Do you have any special offers or packages? Yes, we have several packages available. I can provide you with more information if you're interested. Can you recommend a good restaurant nearby? Absolutely, there are several excellent restaurants within walking distance of our hotel. Booking a luxurious London hotel and planning a family trip. Hi Jennifer, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. Hi Michael, sure. I love good news. What's happening? I've just booked a five-day stay at a luxurious hotel in London for our family vacation. That's fantastic, Michael. Which hotel have you chosen? I've booked us into the Ritz. It's one of the most luxurious hotels in London. Wow, that's quite impressive. What amenities does the hotel offer? The Ritz offers a variety of amenities. They have spacious rooms, a fitness center, a wellness spa, and even a Michelin-starred restaurant. That sounds wonderful. When are we going? We're scheduled to leave next month. We'll have five full days to explore London. That sounds exciting. Do you have any plans for our trip? I've been thinking about it. London has so many attractions. We could visit the British Museum, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, and of course, the London Eye. I've always wanted to see the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. Can we include that in our itinerary? Absolutely, I think that's a great idea. We can also explore some of the city's beautiful parks like Hyde Park and Regent's Park. Don't forget about shopping. I'd love to visit Harrods and the markets at Covent Garden. Of course. Shopping is a must. We can also explore London's theatre district. Maybe we could catch a show at the West End. I'd love that. I've heard that the food scene in London is amazing too. Yes, it's very diverse. We can try everything from traditional English food to international cuisine. This is sounding like a dream vacation, Michael. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Jennifer. I think it's going to be a trip to remember. Thank you for organizing this, Michael. I'm sure the kids will love it too. I hope so, Jennifer. I want it to be a special experience for all of us. I'm sure it will be, Michael. Thank you for making this happen. You're welcome, Jennifer. I'm excited to share this experience with you and the kids. Me too, Michael. I can't wait. Let's start packing then. Absolutely, let the countdown begin. Preparing for a swimming lesson. Hi Mary, how are you today? Hello James, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I heard you have a swimming lesson this weekend. Yes, that's right. I'm excited, but also a bit nervous. That's completely normal, Mary. Do you know what you need to bring for the lesson? Well, I guess I need a swimsuit and a towel, right? Yes, those are essential. Also, it's a good idea to bring goggles and a swim cap if you have them. They protect your eyes and hair from the chlorine in the pool. I see. I will make sure to bring them. How should I prepare myself for the lesson? 
try to eat a light meal about 1 to 2 hours before the lesson. You don't want to swim on an empty stomach, but you also don't want to feel too full. That makes sense. What should I expect during the lesson? During your first lesson, the instructor will probably teach you some basic skills, like floating, kicking, and maybe some basic strokes. What if I feel scared or nervous in the water? It's okay to feel that way. Just remember, your instructor will be there to help you. And it's important to tell them if you're feeling scared or uncomfortable. I understand. Is there anything I should do after the lesson? Yes, after the lesson, it's a good idea to stretch your muscles and drink plenty of water. Also, you should rinse off in the shower to remove any chlorine from your skin and hair. Great advice, James. Thanks for your help. You're welcome, Mary. Swimming is a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. I'm sure you'll do great. I hope so. I'll remember all your tips. Thanks again. No problem at all, Mary. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your swimming lesson. Thank you, James. Have a nice day. Being a contestant on a quiz show. Hi Patricia, I heard you're going to be on a quiz show. Is that true? Hello John, yes, that's correct. I'm both excited and nervous. That sounds like an amazing experience. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got selected? Of course. First, I had to fill out an online application. Then, I was invited to take a test to assess my general knowledge. After passing the test, I had an interview with the show's producers. They must have liked me, because I was selected to be a contestant. Wow, that sounds like quite a process. You must be very knowledgeable. How are you preparing for the show? I've been reading a lot and watching previous episodes of the show to get a feel for the type of questions they might ask. I've also been practicing with some quiz games at home. That's a good strategy. What kind of topics do you think you'll be asked about? Quiz shows usually cover a wide range of topics, such as history, science, culture, and current events. I'm trying to brush up on all these areas as much as I can. That's smart. I'm sure you'll do great. Is there anything you're particularly worried about? I'm a bit worried about the timed nature of the show. I tend to take my time to think about questions, but on the show, I'll need to respond quickly. That's a fair concern, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Remember, it's just as much about the experience as it is about winning. You're absolutely right, John. I'm mainly doing this for the fun of it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Definitely, and who knows? You might even win a big prize. That would be wonderful, but even if I don't, I'm sure I'll have a great time. That's the spirit, Patricia. Do you know when your episode will air? Not yet, but I'll let you know as soon as I do. I can't wait to watch you on TV. Best of luck, Patricia. Thank you, John. Your support means a lot to me. You're welcome, Patricia. Enjoy your time on the show. I certainly will, John. Thanks again for your kind words. My pleasure, Patricia. Take care. You too, John. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Patricia. Can't wait to see you on the show. Hello, my friend. How are you today? Hi, Jack. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. What did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the park with my family. We had a picnic. And you? I watched a movie at home. It was fun. What was the movie about? 
It was about a man who travels in time to save the world. That sounds interesting. Did you like it? Yes, I liked it very much. It was exciting. I want to watch it too. Can you tell me the name of the movie? Of course. The name of the movie is Time Hero. Thank you, Jack. I will watch it soon. You're welcome, Emily. What are your plans for the weekend? This weekend, I will go shopping with my friends. We want to buy new clothes. What about you? I will visit my grandparents in the countryside. I haven't seen them for a long time. That's nice. I'm sure they will be happy to see you. Yes, I think so too. I miss them very much. I hope you have a great time with your grandparents. Thank you, Emily. I hope you have fun shopping with your friends. Thanks, Jack. I'm sure we will. By the way, have you tried the new restaurant near our school? No, I haven't. Is it good? Yes, it's very good. They serve delicious food. We should go there together someday. That's a great idea, Jack. Let's plan it for next week. Sure, I'll check my schedule and let you know. Perfect. I can't wait to try the new restaurant. Me too, Emily. I think you'll like it. I'm sure I will. Thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You too, Jack. See you later. Goodbye, Emily. Have a nice day. Goodbye, Jack. You too. Hi, Sarah. Have you ever been on a safari tour? Hello, John. No, I haven't. What is a safari tour? A safari tour is a trip where you can see wild animals in their natural habitat. It's really exciting. That sounds interesting. Where can we go for a safari tour? We can go to Africa. There are many countries with beautiful safari parks, like Kenya and Tanzania. Wow, I would love to go to Africa. What animals can we see there? We can see lions, elephants, giraffes, zebras, and many more animals. That's amazing. How long is a safari tour? It can be from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on what you want to see and do. I think a week would be enough for me. What do we need to bring for the safari tour? We should bring comfortable clothes, a hat, sunscreen, insect repellent, and a good camera to take pictures of the animals. Great! Do we need to book the safari tour in advance? Yes, it's better to book it a few months before the trip, so we can find the best deals and make sure everything is arranged. I can't wait to go on a safari tour. What else can we do in Africa? We can visit local villages, learn about their culture, and try delicious African food. That sounds like a fantastic experience. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Sarah. I'm sure we'll have an unforgettable time on our safari tour in Africa. Let's start planning our trip. Thank you for telling me about safari tours, John. You're welcome. Sarah. I'm happy to share this adventure with you. Hi, Mary. I'm looking for a place to rent. Do you have any suggestions? Hi, John. Sure, I can help. What kind of place are you looking for? A house, an apartment, or a summer villa? I think an apartment would be best for me. What do you think? That's a good choice. Apartments are usually cheaper than houses and villas. How many rooms do you need? I need at least two rooms, one for myself and one for my office. What's your budget for the rent? 
I can spend up to $1,000 per month. That should be enough to find a nice apartment. What area do you want to live in? I'd like to live close to the city center, but not too close. I prefer a quiet neighborhood. I understand. Let me check online to see what's available in that area. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate your help. No problem, John. I found an apartment that might be perfect for you. It's a two-bedroom apartment, located in a quiet neighborhood, and the rent is $950 per month. That sounds interesting. Can you give me more information about it? Sure. The apartment is on the second floor of a building with an elevator. It has a balcony, a kitchen, and a bathroom with a bathtub. That's great. I like having a balcony. Is it furnished? Yes, it is. The apartment has a bed, a sofa, a dining table, and a desk. Wonderful. How can I contact the owner? I can give you the phone number. Would you like to call them now? Yes, please. I want to arrange a visit as soon as possible. Here is the phone number, 555-123-4567. Good luck, John. I hope you like the apartment. Thank you so much for your help, Mary. I will call the owner right away. You're welcome, John. Let me know how it goes. If you need any more help, just ask. I will, Mary. Have a great day. You too, John. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. Hey Bob, have you ever been on a cruise before? Hi Alice, no, I haven't. How about you? I've been on a cruise once, and it was a great experience. I was thinking about going on a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. Have you heard of them? Yes, I have. They are a popular cruise company. What can you tell me about their Caribbean cruises? They offer various itineraries and visit many beautiful islands in the Caribbean. The ships are incredible, with lots of activities, entertainment, and dining options. That sounds like fun. How long do these cruises usually last? The cruises can range from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on the itinerary you choose. What kind of activities can I expect on the ship? There are swimming pools, water slides, rock climbing walls, theaters, and even ice skating rinks on some ships. They also have various clubs and bars for nighttime entertainment. Wow, that sounds amazing. Are there any special events or theme nights on the cruises? Yes, they often have themed parties, like pirate night or formal night. They also have live shows, comedy acts, and musical performances. What about the ports of call? What kind of activities can I do on the islands? There are many excursions you can book, like snorkeling, beach trips, historical tours, or even zip lining. You can also explore the islands on your own if you prefer. That sounds exciting. How do I book a cruise with Royal Caribbean? You can either book through their website or contact a travel agent. They often have special promotions and discounts, so it's a good idea to check their website regularly. Thanks for the information, Alice. I'll definitely consider taking a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. You're welcome, Bob. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time if you decide to go. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Alice. I'll let you know if I need any more help. Have a great day. You too, Bob. Enjoy planning your trip. Hey Isabella, have you heard about the Maldives? It's a beautiful group of islands with luxury resorts. Hi Eric. Yes, I've heard about the Maldives. It's a popular vacation destination, right? 
Exactly. I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could plan a 15-day trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives with our school friends? That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to visit the Maldives. How do we start planning this trip? First, we need to decide which resort we want to stay at. There are so many to choose from. Maybe we can ask our friends for suggestions. I'm sure some of them have been to the Maldives before. Great idea. We can create a group chat and ask everyone for their input. After we decide on a resort, we'll need to book our flights and accommodations. It might be a good idea to start looking for deals now. Yes, I'll start searching for flights and resort packages. We should also decide on the dates for our trip. How about we make a list of activities we want to do while we're in the Maldives? That way, we can plan our days accordingly. That's a smart idea. There are so many activities to choose from, like snorkeling, scuba diving, and island hopping. Don't forget about relaxing on the beach and enjoying the beautiful sunsets. Of course. We'll also need to decide on a budget for our trip. Yes, we should take into account the cost of flights, accommodations, activities, and meals. Once we have a rough budget, we can share it with our friends and see if everyone is comfortable with it. I think it's important to be flexible with our plans, so everyone can have a good time. I agree. Let's get started on planning this amazing vacation. I can't wait. This will be a trip to remember. Thanks for suggesting it, Eric. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm sure it will be an unforgettable experience for all of us. Let's make it happen. Hi Isabella, have you ever thought about visiting the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations? Hello Eric, yes, I've always been fascinated by their history and culture. Have you ever been there? I haven't, but I've been doing some research and I think it would be an amazing experience. Would you like to plan a trip together? That sounds like a great idea. Where should we start? Well, we could begin by visiting the ancient city of Teotihuacan in Mexico. It was an important center for both the Aztec and Maya civilizations. I've heard of Teotihuacan. It has the famous Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, right? Yes, that's correct. We could also visit the Templo Mayor in Mexico City, which was the main temple of the Aztec civilization. I'd love to see that. What about the Maya civilization? Where can we go to learn more about them? We could visit Chichen Itza in Mexico, which is one of the most famous Maya sites. It has the Cuculcan Pyramid, also known as El Castillo. That sounds fascinating. Are there any other important Maya sites we should consider visiting? Definitely. We could visit Palenque and Tulum in Mexico, Tikal in Guatemala, and Copan in Honduras. Each of these sites has its own unique history and architecture. Wow, there are so many places to explore. How should we plan our trip? I suggest we create an itinerary, starting with the sites we want to visit most. We can then research transportation options and accommodations near each site. That's a good plan. We should also learn more about the history and culture of the Aztec and Maya civilizations before our trip. I agree. We could read some books, watch documentaries, and maybe even take a course on their history and culture. I think that would really enrich our experience. Let's start planning and make sure we have enough time to fully appreciate each site. Absolutely. I'm really excited about this trip, Isabella. I think we're going to have an unforgettable experience. I agree, Eric. I can't wait to explore the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations with you. Shopping for shoes at a shoe store. Hi Isabella, I heard you're looking for a new pair of shoes. Do you need any help? Hi Eric, yes, I am. 
I would appreciate some assistance. I'm not quite sure what type of shoes I should buy. Sure, I'm happy to help. First, let's think about what you need the shoes for. Are they for a specific event, or just everyday wear? I need some comfortable shoes for daily use. Something that can match with different outfits. Great. Let's start by looking at some sneakers and casual shoes. They're usually comfortable and versatile. What's your favorite color? I like black, white, and blue. I think those colors can easily match my wardrobe. Good choices. Here are some sneakers in those colors. You can also consider slip-ons or loafers for a more casual look. What do you think about these options? I like these black sneakers and the blue loafers. Can I try them on? Of course. Let me check if they have your size. What size do you wear? I wear a size 7. Okay, here you go. Try these on and see how they feel. Remember to walk around a bit to make sure they're comfortable. Thanks, Eric. These black sneakers feel great, but the blue loafers are a bit tight. Do they have a bigger size? Let me check for you. Yes, they have a size 7.5. Here, try these on. Thank you. The 7.5 fits much better. I think I'll go with the blue loafers. Great choice. They look stylish and comfortable. Is there anything else you need help with? Actually, I'm also looking for some shoe care products. What do you recommend to keep these loafers clean and in good condition? For leather shoes like these, I'd recommend using a soft cloth, leather cleaner, and leather conditioner. It's important to clean and condition your shoes regularly to keep them looking nice. Thank you for the advice, Eric. I'll pick up those shoe care products before I leave. I appreciate your help today. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm glad I could help. If you have any other questions or need assistance in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your new shoes. Thanks, Eric. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Take care. Buying jewelry at a store. Hi Isabella, I heard you wanted to buy some jewelry. Can I help you with that? Hello Eric, yes, I'm looking for a jewelry store to buy a diamond ring and some gold earrings. Do you know a good place? Of course, Isabella. There's a great jewelry store called Elegant Gems nearby. They have a wide selection of diamonds, gold, and other precious stones. That sounds perfect. Do you know how to choose a good diamond? I'm not an expert, but I know the four CS are important. Carat, cut, color, and clarity. The carat is the weight of the diamond, and the cut refers to how well the diamond is shaped. I see. What about color and clarity? Color refers to the absence of any color in a diamond. The less color, the more valuable the diamond. Clarity is about the number of imperfections in the diamond. The fewer imperfections, the more valuable the stone. Thank you, Eric. That's very helpful. What about gold? How do I know if it's good quality? Gold is measured in carats, with 24 carats being pure gold. The higher the carat number, the more gold there is in the piece of jewelry. I understand. Is it better to buy higher carat gold? It depends on your preference. Higher carat gold is more valuable, but it's also softer and more susceptible to scratches. Lower carat gold is more durable but has a lower gold content. I appreciate the information. How can I make sure I'm getting a good deal at the jewelry store? It's a good idea to compare prices at different stores and ask for any available discounts. You can also ask for a certificate of authenticity for diamonds and other precious stones. Great advice, Eric. Thank you so much for your help. I feel more confident going to the jewelry store now. You're welcome, Isabella. 
If you have any more questions or need help, feel free to ask. Good luck with your jewelry shopping. Thank you, Eric. I'll let you know what I find. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Enjoy your shopping. The Beauty of Serengeti Hi Isabella. Have you ever watched a nature documentary about the Serengeti in Africa? Hello Eric. Yes, I've seen a few documentaries. It's an amazing place with lots of beautiful landscapes and wildlife. I agree. I watched one recently, and I was fascinated by the vast open plains and the variety of animals that live there. Did you know that Serengeti is home to the largest land animal migration in the world? Yes, I've heard about the Great Migration. It's when millions of wildebeest, zebras, and other animals travel in search of food and water, right? That's correct. They travel around 1,800 miles each year, facing many challenges like crossing crocodile-infested rivers and avoiding predators like lions and hyenas. Wow, that's incredible. I also read that the Serengeti ecosystem supports the highest concentration of large predators in the world. Yes, it's true. The predators are essential for maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. For instance, lions help control the population of herbivores by hunting them for food. I remember seeing a documentary about the endangered African elephants in the Serengeti. They're such intelligent and social animals. Absolutely. Elephants are known for their strong family bonds and their ability to communicate with each other. They also play a vital role in shaping the landscape by uprooting trees and creating clearings, which promotes the growth of grasslands. It's sad to think about how human activities, like poaching and habitat loss, are threatening these amazing creatures. Yes, it's crucial to raise awareness and support conservation efforts to protect the Serengeti and its inhabitants. Many organizations are working hard to preserve this unique ecosystem. That's true. And ecotourism can also contribute to conservation by providing funds for wildlife protection and supporting local communities. Absolutely. Visiting the Serengeti on a responsible safari can be a life-changing experience, offering a chance to witness the beauty of nature while supporting its preservation. I'd love to visit the Serengeti one day and see its breathtaking landscapes and incredible wildlife with my own eyes. Me too, Isabella. It's definitely on my bucket list. Until then, we can continue learning about it and sharing our knowledge with others to help promote conservation. That's a great idea, Eric. Let's keep exploring the wonders of our planet and do our part to protect it. I couldn't agree more, Isabella. Let's keep our passion for nature alive and inspire others to join us in our journey. The big news, Charles and Elizabeth are getting engaged. Hello Elizabeth, you look beautiful today. How are you feeling? Hi Charles, thank you for the compliment. I'm feeling great. How about you? I'm feeling fantastic, especially since I have something important to tell you. Oh, really? What is it? Well, Elizabeth, we've been together for a long time now, and I think it's time for us to take our relationship to the next level. Charles, are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes, Elizabeth. I'm asking if you'd like to become engaged to me. Will you be my fiancé? Oh Charles, I'm so happy. Yes, I will be your fiancé. I'm thrilled to hear that, Elizabeth. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Same here, Charles. What do we need to do next? Well, traditionally, the next step would be to choose an engagement ring. Would you like to come with me to pick one out, or would you like it to be a surprise? I would love to pick out the ring together, Charles. Great. 
we can visit the jewelry store next week. Besides that, we should also start thinking about our engagement party. That sounds like fun. Should we have a theme for the party? That's a good idea. We could think about our shared interests and decide on a theme that represents us. I agree, Charles. We also need to make a guest list. Yes, we should include our close friends and family. They'll be excited to hear our good news. Absolutely. And we'll need to decide on the food, drinks, and decorations. That's right. We can start planning those details once we've set a date for the party. I'm looking forward to planning this party with you, Charles. I am too, Elizabeth. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with you. I feel the same way, Charles. This is the beginning of a new and exciting chapter in our lives. The Grand Shopping Adventure of Charles and Elizabeth Hi Elizabeth, how are you today? Hello Charles, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. I heard you went shopping this weekend. What happened? Oh, it was quite the adventure. I went to the new mall downtown. Really? Who did what there? Well, I went with my friend Sarah. She bought a beautiful dress from a boutique. And I bought some new books. That sounds fun. What kind of books did you buy? I bought a few mystery novels, a cookbook, and a book about gardening. Interesting choices. Did you manage to get any good deals? Yes, we did. Sarah got her dress on sale, and I found a bargain on the cookbook. That's great. Were there a lot of people at the mall? Yes, it was pretty crowded. But everyone was wearing masks and keeping their distance, so it felt safe. That's good to hear. Did anything interesting happen while you were shopping? Yes, while we were there, a local band started playing music in the center of the mall. It was a nice surprise. That does sound like a nice surprise. Did you enjoy the music? We really did. They played a mix of pop and rock songs, and they were quite good. It sounds like you had a wonderful time. I should check out that mall soon. You definitely should, Charles. Maybe we could go together next time? That sounds like a great plan, Elizabeth. I'm looking forward to our shopping adventure. Me too, Charles. Let's make sure to plan it soon. Getting to know Dexter and Elizabeth, a journey of discovery. Hi Elizabeth, how are you today? Hello Dexter, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. Since we've recently met, I thought we could know more about each other. That sounds like a good idea. Where are you from, Dexter? I'm originally from London, England. I moved to the United States for work a few years ago. And you, Elizabeth? I was born and raised in New York. It's a bustling city. Do you miss London? Yes, I do, especially the historical buildings and the amazing food. But I'm also enjoying life here in the US. How about your family, Elizabeth? My parents live in Florida now, and my brother works in California. I visit them quite often. Do you have any siblings, Dexter? Yes, I have two sisters. They both live in London and I miss them a lot. I can imagine, family is so important. What's your favorite thing about living in the US? I love the diversity here. People from all walks of life coexist, which makes this place quite fascinating. What about you? What's your favorite thing about New York? The endless opportunities and the energy of the city. There's always something to do or see. 
What do you do in your free time, Dexter? I enjoy reading and hiking. The nearby mountains provide a great escape from the city life. How about you? I love painting and playing piano. It's a good way to relax and unwind. That sounds great. Music and art are indeed good stress busters. Have you always lived in New York? Yes, I was born and raised here, but I love traveling and have visited many different countries. How about you? Have you traveled to many places? Yes, I've been fortunate to visit several countries due to my work. I'm particularly fond of Italy for its rich culture and history. Italy is indeed a beautiful country. I visited Rome last year and it was an unforgettable experience. It certainly sounds like it. Speaking of experiences, I would love to hear more about your painting. I'd love to share more about it. Painting is a passion of mine and it's very therapeutic. How about your hobbies, Dexter? I find hiking to be very calming and rejuvenating. I guess we both have our unique ways of finding peace and tranquility. Yes, indeed. I'm glad we had this conversation, Dexter. It's nice to know more about you. Likewise, Elizabeth. I enjoyed our chat. Here's to many more. Absolutely, Dexter. Here's to many more. The fire in the abandoned building downtown, what happened? Hi Rebecca, did you hear about the fire downtown last night? Hello Albert, yes, I did. It was quite scary. It was in that old, abandoned building, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I saw it on the news. The firefighters were there all night trying to put out the flames. I can't believe it. That building has been empty for years. How do you think the fire started? The authorities are still investigating. They're not sure if it was an accident or if it was set on purpose. That's terrifying. I hope no one was hurt. Fortunately, the building was vacant and no one was injured. But it caused a lot of damage. That's a relief. I'm glad to hear no one was hurt. But what about the damage to the building? The building was already in poor condition. The fire caused even more damage and it may need to be demolished now. I suppose that's not a surprise. It's been neglected for so long. Do you think this could have been prevented? It's hard to say. If the building had been maintained or secured better, it might have made a difference. A difference. I agree. It's a shame that it ended up like this. What do you think will happen now? The city will likely inspect the damage and decide whether the building should be repaired or demolished. They'll also continue to investigate the cause of the fire. I hope they find out what caused it. It's important to prevent something like this from happening again. I completely agree, Rebecca. It's a serious issue that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. Well, it's good that we're aware of what happened. It's important to stay informed about our community. That's true. I'm glad we could discuss it. It's good to keep up with local news and understand what's happening in our city. Thank you, Albert. I always enjoy our conversations. They're not only interesting but also very informative. I'm glad to hear that, Rebecca. I feel the same way. I'll keep you updated if I hear any more news about the fire. I'd appreciate that, Albert. Have a great day. You too, Rebecca. Take care. Unlock the secrets of finding the best travel deals. Hello Rebecca, I heard you're planning to travel. Where are you planning to go? Hi Albert, I'm planning to visit Spain. I'm really looking forward to it, but I need to find a reasonable ticket. That sounds exciting. Well, there are several ways to find good deals on flight tickets. 
Have you decided when you're going? I'm pretty flexible, but I'd prefer to travel during the off-peak season to save some money. That's a smart choice. Prices usually drop during the off-peak season. Have you considered booking your flight in advance? Yes, I have. But how far in advance should I book? Typically, booking a flight two to three months in advance can get you a good deal. However, keep an eye on flight prices as they can fluctuate. That's a good tip, Albert. I'll start checking the prices regularly. Another thing you can do is use flight comparison websites. They compare prices from different airlines and show you the cheapest options. I've heard about those, but I'm not sure which ones to use. Some popular ones are Skyscanner, Kayak, and Expedia. They're quite user-friendly. I'll give them a try. Is there anything else I should know? Yes, consider being flexible with your departure and arrival airports. Sometimes, nearby airports may offer cheaper flights. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you for all the tips, Albert. You're welcome, Rebecca. Another thing to consider is signing up for airline newsletters. They often send exclusive deals and discounts to their subscribers. That's a great idea. I'll definitely sign up for a few. Also, consider using a credit card that offers travel rewards. You can earn points for every purchase you make and then redeem those points for flights. I'll look into that. Thanks, Albert. You've been so helpful. I feel more confident about finding a good deal now. I'm glad to hear that, Rebecca. Remember, finding the best deal takes a bit of time and research, but it's worth it in the end. Enjoy your trip to Spain. Thanks, Albert. I'll keep all your advice in mind. I appreciate your help. It's my pleasure, Rebecca. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Safe travels. Thank you, Albert. I'm looking forward to my trip. Have a great day. The unexpected surprise, what happened to Rebecca's car? Hi Rebecca, I have something important to tell you. Hello Richard, sure, what is it? Do you remember you let me borrow your car yesterday? Yes, I remember. Is there something wrong with my car? No, no, your car is perfectly fine. It's just that something interesting happened while I was using it. Interesting? What do you mean? Well, while I was driving your car, I got a flat tire. Oh no, really? What did you do then? I called roadside assistance, and they came to help me change the tire. That's good to hear, Richard. But why is this an interesting story? Because while I was waiting for the roadside assistance, I met a man who was walking his dog. We started chatting, and it turns out he's a famous movie director. A movie director? Really? Which one? His name is David, and he directed some of the biggest blockbuster movies in Hollywood. That's amazing. But what's the connection with my car? Well, he noticed your car and complimented it. He said it's just the kind of car he was looking for to use in his next movie. My car in a movie? That's incredible. Yes, it is. And he gave me his contact details. He said he'd like to meet you and talk about it if you're interested. Wow, that's an unexpected surprise. I'd love to meet him. Great. I'll arrange a meeting then. It was quite an adventure, thanks to borrowing your car. Thank you, Richard. I'm excited to see where this leads. Me too, Rebecca. I'm glad I could share this exciting news with you. Thanks again, Richard. I'll look forward to hearing more about it.
do-it-yourself house painting adventures with Richard and Linda. Hi Linda, how are you today? Hello Richard, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fantastic, thanks. I've been busy painting my house. Have you ever tried painting a house yourself? Oh, that's interesting. No, I haven't, but it seems like a big project. Did you paint the house yourself, Richard? Yes, I did. It was a bit challenging but also very satisfying. I learned a lot from the experience. That's impressive. How did you decide on the color? I wanted to give my house a fresh look. So, I chose a light blue color. It really brightens up the house. That sounds lovely. What materials did you need for the project? I needed a lot of things, like paint, brushes, a ladder, and protective sheets to cover the floor and furniture. It's important to prepare everything before starting. I see. Did you encounter any difficulties while painting? Well, painting the high parts of the house was a bit tricky. I had to use a ladder and be very careful not to fall. Safety first, of course. How long did it take you to finish painting? It took me a couple of weekends. I wanted to take my time to make sure everything was done properly. It sounds like a rewarding experience. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to paint their house? Certainly, it's best to take your time, especially if it's your first time painting a house. And don't be afraid to ask for help or advice. There are many resources online that can guide you. Thank you for the advice, Richard. Your experience makes me want to try painting my house too. That's great to hear, Linda. I'm sure you do a fantastic job. If you ever decide to paint your house, feel free to ask me for help. Thank you, Richard. I will keep that in mind. Congratulations on successfully painting your house. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate your kind words. Let's talk again soon. Exploring the exotic marvels of Morocco Hi Linda, I've been thinking about my next holiday destination. Hi Richard, that sounds exciting. Where are you planning to go? I'd like to go to Morocco for my holidays. I've heard a lot about its rich culture and history. Oh, that's a fantastic choice. Morocco has a lot to offer. Have you thought about what cities you want to visit? I've heard that Marrakesh and Casablanca are must-visit cities. Do you have any recommendations? Indeed, Marrakesh and Casablanca are beautiful. You should also consider visiting Fez and Chefchaouen. Fez is known for its historic Medina and Chefchaouen is famous for its blue-painted streets. That sounds great. I'll add them to my list. What about the food? I've heard Moroccan cuisine is incredible. You're absolutely right. Make sure to try traditional dishes like couscous, tagine, and pastilla. Also, their mint tea is very famous. I'm looking forward to trying all those dishes. What's the best time to visit Morocco? Morocco can be visited all year round, but the most pleasant time is during spring and fall when the temperatures are moderate. That's very useful, Linda. What about the local culture? Is there anything I need to know? Moroccans are generally very hospitable and friendly. Just remember to respect the local customs and traditions. Also, bargaining is very common in the markets, so don't be shy to negotiate prices. I appreciate your advice, Linda. I'm getting more excited about this trip. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time, Richard. Feel free to ask if you have more questions. Thanks a lot, Linda. I'll start planning my trip right away. You're welcome, Richard. I can't wait to hear all about your Moroccan adventure. Discovering Cities and Professions, an inspiring conversation between Richard and Linda. 
Hello Linda, how are you today? Hi Richard, I'm well, thank you. And you? I'm great, thanks. I was wondering if we could chat about cities and professions. I'm interested in learning more about different jobs and where they are prevalent. That's a very interesting topic, Richard. I'd be happy to share what I know. Where do you want to start? Let's start with our own city. What professions are common here? Well, we live in a big city, so there's quite a range. We have many people working in business, technology, healthcare, and education, to name a few. Right, those are definitely prevalent. What about in smaller cities or towns? In smaller towns, you might find more people working in agriculture or local businesses. Teachers, doctors, and public service workers like police and firefighters are essential everywhere, of course. That makes sense. What about professions related to the arts? Those can be found in many places, but larger cities often have a more vibrant arts scene. They might have more opportunities for actors, musicians, artists, and so on. I see. And what about professions that are unique to certain cities? Great question. Some cities are known for certain industries. For example, Los Angeles is known for entertainment, while Silicon Valley is known for technology. Fascinating. It's interesting to see how cities and professions can be so interconnected. Indeed, the city's culture, resources, and history can influence the types of jobs that are common there. I appreciate your insights, Linda. This conversation has given me a lot to think about. I'm glad you found it interesting, Richard. It was a pleasure to discuss this topic with you. Thank you, Linda. I look forward to our next conversation. Me too, Richard. Take care. Barcode scanners, revolutionizing the world one code at a time. Hi Rebecca, how are you today? Hi Richard, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I was reading about barcode scanners, and I thought it would be interesting to discuss. Sounds interesting. Could you explain to me what a barcode scanner is? Sure, a barcode scanner is a device that can read the information encoded in a barcode. This information is usually a unique identifier for a product or item. Oh, I see. So it's the device we see in supermarkets that scans our products? Exactly. Those are just one type of barcode scanner. There are many different types, but they all work in a similar way. That's cool. But what makes them so important? What benefits do they provide? Well, barcode scanners provide a lot of benefits. They can help to increase efficiency and accuracy in many fields. For instance, in retail, they help with inventory management, pricing, and checkout speed. Can you explain how they increase efficiency and accuracy? Of course. Since the information is stored electronically, the scanner can read it quickly and accurately. This reduces the chance of human error that can occur with manual data entry. I see. That sounds like a great advantage. How do they help with inventory management? With barcode scanners, inventory tracking becomes much easier. Each time a product is sold, its barcode is scanned, and the inventory system is updated automatically. This helps businesses know exactly how much of a product they have in stock at any time. That sounds very useful. Are there any other areas where barcode scanners are used? Yes, they are also used in logistics, healthcare, and even in libraries. For example, in healthcare, they can help track patient information and medication, ensuring that the right patient gets the right medication at the right time. It's fascinating how barcode scanners can provide such convenience and accuracy. They really are revolutionizing many sectors. I couldn't agree more, Rebecca. 
barcode scanners are indeed a simple technology that has profound impacts. Thank you, Richard, for such an enlightening conversation. I've certainly learned a lot about barcode scanners. You're welcome, Rebecca. I'm glad I could share this knowledge with you. Have a great day. You too, Richard. Take care. Uncovering the legend of Maradona, soccer, the World Cup, and the hand of God. Hi Rebecca, have you ever heard about Maradona? Hello Albert, yes, of course. Maradona is a legendary soccer player, isn't he? That's correct. Diego Maradona is considered one of the greatest soccer players of all time. He was born in Argentina. I've heard about him playing in the World Cup. Can you tell me more? Yes, Maradona had some of his finest moments in the World Cup. He played in four World Cups for Argentina, and in 1986, he led the team to victory. That's impressive. I've heard about a controversial goal he scored in that tournament. What's the story behind that? Oh, you're referring to the hand of God goal. It happened during the quarter-final match against England in 1986. Maradona punched the ball into the net with his hand, and the referee allowed the goal. Why is it called the hand of God? It's because Maradona later claimed that the goal was scored a little with the head of Maradona and a little with the hand of God. This comment made headlines around the world, and hence, the goal has since been known as the hand of God. That's a fascinating story. Did this incident affect his career? It did stir controversy, but it didn't overshadow his skills and contributions to the game. In fact, in the same match, he scored what is often referred to as the goal of the century, an incredible solo goal where he dribbled past five England players to score. It sounds like he had quite the impact on the world of soccer. Absolutely. Maradona's style of play, his dribbling ability, and his tactical mind have influenced many players. His story is not only about his extraordinary talent, but also about his struggle with fame and personal issues, making him an incredibly complex and interesting figure in sports history. I feel like I've learned so much about Maradona today. Thank you for sharing, Albert. It was my pleasure, Rebecca. It's always exciting to discuss soccer and its legends. Do you have any other questions on this topic? Not for now, Albert. But I'm sure I'll have more the next time we chat. I look forward to it. I do as well, Rebecca. Until then, take care. You too, Albert. See you soon. The thrills of football and the excitement of the World Cup. Hi Rebecca, have you been following the World Cup? Hello Albert, yes, I have. It's such an exciting time. Do you like football? Absolutely. Football brings people together from all over the world. I love the energy of the World Cup. How about you? I feel the same. The World Cup is the pinnacle of football. It's incredible to see so many countries represented. I agree. The level of talent on display is outstanding. What's been your favorite match so far? I really enjoyed the match between Brazil and Germany. The level of skill and teamwork was impressive. What about you? That was a great match indeed. I enjoyed watching Argentina versus Spain. The strategies and tactics used were fascinating. Yes, the tactical side of football can be just as thrilling as the goals. Who are you rooting for in the tournament? I'm supporting England this year. I've always admired their style of play. And you? I'm rooting for France. I've followed them since I was a kid. It's been exciting to watch their journey in this World Cup. Both are strong teams. It will be interesting to see how they perform in the coming matches. Do you have a favorite player? 
I really admire Kylian Mbappe. His speed and skill are astonishing. Who's your favorite player? I have always been a fan of Lionel Messi. His ability to control the ball and create opportunities is exceptional. Yes, they're both great players. I think what makes the World Cup so special is seeing all these talented players compete on the same stage. That's very true. It's a chance for players and countries to show their skills and share their love for football. It's truly a global celebration. I couldn't agree more. Football and the World Cup bring so much joy and unity. I'm looking forward to the rest of the matches. Me too, Rebecca. Let's catch the next game together. That sounds great, Albert. I'm looking forward to it. A delicious dilemma, the secret behind Barbara's cooking. Hello Robert, I wanted to share something funny with you. My husband thinks I'm a wonderful cook. Hi Barbara. That's great to hear. And why do you find that funny? Well, because I don't actually do much cooking. I usually buy pre-made meals and just heat them up. That's interesting, Barbara. But perhaps he enjoys the way you present the food or the atmosphere you create during meal times. Maybe, Robert. I try to set a nice table and we often enjoy our meals together with some music in the background. See, Barbara. That's part of the magic of a good meal. It's not just about the food, but also about the environment and company. That's a nice perspective, Robert. But I still feel a bit guilty. Do you think I should tell him? If you're comfortable doing so, maybe you could tell him. Honesty is always the best policy in a relationship. Or perhaps you could start learning to cook and surprise him. That's a good idea, Robert. I've always wanted to learn to cook, but never found the time. I might take some cooking classes. That sounds like a plan, Barbara. And remember, cooking is a skill. With practice, you can definitely get better at it. Yes, you're right. It will also be a fun activity to do. Maybe my husband can join me in the cooking classes. That's an excellent idea, Barbara. It can be a great way to spend time together and create a new shared hobby. You've given me so much to think about, Robert. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome, Barbara. Enjoy your cooking journey, and don't forget to share some of your delicious creations with me. Of course, Robert. I will definitely share the fruits of our labor with you. I'm looking forward to it, Barbara. Have a great day. The unexpected adventure after missing the first bus. Hi Barbara, you won't believe what happened to me this morning. Hello Robert. I'm curious now. What happened? I missed the first bus to work. I woke up late and rushed to the bus stop, but I was too late. Oh no, Robert. That must have been stressful. How did you manage to get to work? It was indeed, but something interesting happened. I decided to wait for the next bus and while waiting, I decided to have a cup of coffee from the cafe near the bus stop. That sounds nice. So, was your day better after the coffee? It was, Barbara. At the cafe. I met an old friend from college who I hadn't seen in years. We had a long chat and even decided to catch up more often. Wow, Robert. Missing the bus turned out to be a good thing after all. Yes, it did. I was reminded of how small surprises can make your day. That's true, Robert. It's important to remain positive even in unexpected situations. How was the rest of your day? It was quite good, Barbara. I managed to catch the next bus and reach work on time. I had a productive day at work, and the meeting with my old friend made it even better. 
That's great, Robert. I'm happy to hear that you had a good day, despite the initial hiccup. Thanks, Barbara. It was indeed an unexpected adventure. How was your day? My day was quite usual, Robert. But hearing about your day made it more interesting. I'm glad to hear that, Barbara. It just goes to show that every cloud has a silver lining. Absolutely, Robert. Thanks for sharing your story with me. You're welcome, Barbara. I'm looking forward to more unexpected adventures. Me too, Robert. Let's hope for the best. Behind the scenes of a best-selling novel, a candid conversation with David the author. Hi David, how are you today? Hello Barbara, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I've heard that you're writing a novel. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I've been working on it for the past few months. That's exciting. Can you share what it's about? Well, it's a mystery novel set in a small town. The main character is a detective trying to solve a series of unusual events happening in the town. That sounds interesting. What inspired you to write this novel? I've always been a fan of mystery novels, and I wanted to create my own unique story. The idea of a small town with secrets appealed to me. I can't wait to read it. What's your process for writing a novel? I start by outlining the main plot and characters. Then, I work on each chapter, focusing on keeping the story engaging and suspenseful. It seems like a lot of work. How do you stay motivated? I try to write a little bit every day, and I always keep in mind the end goal, which is to create a captivating story for readers. That's a great approach. Do you have any tips for people who want to write their own novels? Definitely. Start with an idea you're passionate about, create an outline, and write a little every day. Don't worry about it being perfect at first, you can always edit later. Those are helpful tips, David. When do you expect to finish your novel? I'm aiming to finish the first draft in the next couple of months. After that, I'll spend some time editing and refining the story. That's wonderful, David. I wish you the best of luck with your novel. I'm sure it will be a success. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate your support and kind words. Behind the scenes of the stock market. Hi Barbara, how have you been? Hello David, I've been well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I heard that you started working for a stockbroker. How's that going? It's been a fascinating experience, David. I've been learning a lot about how the stock market works. That sounds interesting. Can you explain a little bit about what a stockbroker does? Sure, a stockbroker is a professional who buys and sells stocks and other securities for both retail and institutional clients through a stock exchange or over the counter in return for a fee or commission. I see. That seems like a very important job. What's your role in the company? I work as an assistant to the stockbroker. I help in researching the stock market, preparing reports, and handling client communications. That must be a lot of work. But it also sounds like a great opportunity to learn. Yes, it's quite challenging, but also very rewarding. I get to be involved in exciting financial transactions and help our clients make informed investment decisions. Do you have any advice for someone interested in investing in the stock market? Well, I'm not a financial advisor, but I would say it's important to do your research, understand your financial goals, and be prepared for the risks involved. Also, it can be helpful to work with a professional, like a stockbroker. Thank you for the advice, Barbara. Your job sounds very exciting. I might consider investing in the stock market myself. 
I'm glad to hear that, David. Remember, it's always a good idea to get professional advice before making any investment decisions. Absolutely, Barbara. Thanks for the insightful conversation. I hope we can chat more about this in the future. Of course, David. I'm always here if you have any more questions. Have a great day. My little house and my big family. Hi, how was your day? Hi, my day was good. How about you? I'm good too. I was thinking about my small house and big family. Oh, that sounds interesting. How many people are in your family? There are 10 people in my family, including me. Wow, that's a big family. Who are the members of your family? I have my parents, three brothers, two sisters, and my grandparents. That's nice. Do you all live in the same small house? Yes, we do. It's a bit crowded, but we love being together. I can imagine. What do you like most about having a big family? I like that there is always someone to talk to and play with. That's true. Do you have any family traditions? Yes, we have a big family dinner every Sunday night. That sounds lovely. What kind of food do you usually have at the dinner? We have different dishes every time, but my mom's pasta is always a favorite. I love pasta too. Do you help with the cooking? Yes, sometimes I help my mom in the kitchen. I like to learn new recipes. That's great. Do your siblings help as well? Yes, we all take turns helping with the cooking and cleaning. It's nice that everyone contributes. Do you have any pets? Yes, we have a dog named Max. He's like another family member. I love dogs. How do you manage to take care of him with so many people in the house? We all take turns walking him and feeding him. It's not too hard. That's good to hear. I think having a big family is wonderful. I agree. I'm very lucky to have them. How about your family? My family is smaller, but I still love them very much. That's great. Family is important, no matter the size. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you about your family. Thank you. I enjoyed our conversation too. Have a great day. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you later. Human Anatomy Hi Bob, I want to learn about human anatomy. Can you help me with that? Hello Alice, sure. I'd be happy to help. Human anatomy is the study of the body and its parts. That sounds interesting. What are the main parts of the human body? The human body has many parts. Some of the main ones are the head, arms, legs, and the torso, which is the middle part of the body. I see. Can you tell me about the head? Of course. The head has the brain, which is the control center of the body. It also has the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. What about the arms and legs? The arms and legs are also called limbs. The arms have hands at the end, and the legs have feet. We use our arms and hands to hold things and our legs and feet to walk. That's clear. And what's inside the torso? The torso contains many important organs, such as the heart, lungs, and stomach. The heart pumps blood, the lungs help us breathe, and the stomach helps us digest food. I've heard about bones. What can you tell me about them? Bones are the hard parts that make up the skeleton, which gives the body its shape and support. 
There are 206 bones in an adult human body. Wow, that's a lot of bones. How do the parts of the body work together? The different parts of the body work together like a team. For example, the muscles help us move, the heart and lungs provide oxygen and nutrients, and the brain sends signals to control everything. That's amazing. How can I learn more about human anatomy? You can read books, watch videos, or take a class to learn more about human anatomy. It's a fascinating subject. Thank you, Bob. I'll look for more information. I appreciate your help. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Enjoy learning about human anatomy. Thanks, Bob. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Take care. Gas station. Hello. How are you today? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I need to go to the gas station to get some fuel for my car. Do you know where the nearest one is? Yes, there's a gas station just two blocks away from here. Turn right at the next intersection and you'll see it. Great, thank you. I'm new to this area, so I'm still learning where everything is. No problem, happy to help. Do you need directions to any other places around here? Actually, I'm also looking for a grocery store to buy some food. Do you know where I can find one? Sure. There's a big supermarket just five minutes away by car. After you leave the gas station, continue straight for two blocks, then turn left. You'll see the supermarket on your right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome. If you need any more help, feel free to ask. I've lived in this neighborhood for a long time, so I know my way around. That's very kind of you. I will definitely ask if I need any more assistance. Are there any good restaurants around here that you recommend? Oh, there are many. If you like pizza, there's a fantastic pizza place just across the street from the supermarket. They have the best pizza in town. I love pizza. I'll have to try it out. What about a good place for coffee or breakfast? There's a cozy little cafe a few blocks away from the pizza place. They have great coffee and delicious pastries. It's the perfect spot for breakfast or an afternoon snack. That sounds lovely. I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks for all the recommendations. My pleasure. Enjoy exploring the neighborhood. I will. Have a great day. You too. Good luck with your errands. Unveiling the Urban Canvas, Graffiti in the Metro and the City Hey Emma, how's your day going? Hi Jack, I'm doing well, thanks. And you? I'm doing fine. Did you notice the new graffiti in the metro? Yes, I did. It's quite eye-catching. What are your thoughts on graffiti, Jack? Well, Emma, I think graffiti is an intriguing form of art. It gives artists a chance to express themselves in public spaces. I agree, Jack. It can certainly add color and character to otherwise dull spaces, like a metro station. However, isn't it considered illegal in many places? That's a good point, Emma. Yes, unauthorized graffiti is often viewed as vandalism and is illegal. It can lead to fines or even imprisonment. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? On one hand, it's a creative expression, on the other hand, it's seen as a crime. Absolutely, it's a fine line between art and vandalism. What do you think about graffiti being used to address social issues? I think it can be a powerful tool for raising awareness and sparking conversations about important topics. 
I've seen some graffiti pieces in the city that depict global warming, for instance. Yes, it's amazing how a piece of art can convey such powerful messages. Graffiti can definitely be a voice for the voiceless. True. But there should be some rules, I guess. Artistic expression shouldn't harm public or private property. I completely agree, Emma. Maybe cities can designate specific areas for artists to create their graffiti. That way, it can be appreciated without causing any harm. That sounds like a balanced solution, Jack. It's a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise, Emma. Conversations like this make me appreciate the complex beauty of our urban landscapes. Indeed, Jack. I look forward to more enlightening conversations with you. Have a great day. Day of the Dead Festival in Mexico. Hi Mary. I recently heard about a unique festival in Mexico called the Day of the Dead. Do you know anything about it? Hi James. Yes, I do. The Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos in Spanish, is a traditional Mexican holiday that celebrates and remembers loved ones who have passed away. That sounds interesting. How do they celebrate it? It's a colorful and festive event. Families create altars, or ofrendas, in their homes to honor their deceased loved ones. These altars are decorated with flowers, candles, photos of the deceased, and their favorite foods and drinks. It sounds like a beautiful tribute. Is there any significance to the items placed on the altar? Yes, there is. Each item has a specific meaning. For example, marigold flowers or sampasakil are believed to guide the spirits to the altar. Candles are lit to welcome them, and the food is an offering for the spirits. That's quite meaningful. Are there any other customs associated with the Day of the Dead? Absolutely. One popular tradition is the creation of sugar skulls or calicas. These are colorful, decorated skulls made of sugar, which symbolize death and rebirth. I've seen pictures of those. They're very vibrant and artistic. Are there any special foods or drinks during this festival? Yes, there are. Pan de Muerto, or Bread of the Dead, is a sweet bread that's commonly made for this occasion. Also, a drink called Atoll, which is a traditional hot corn and masa drink, is often consumed. It's fascinating how the Day of the Dead seems to mix celebration with remembrance. Is this festival only celebrated in Mexico? The Day of the Dead is primarily a Mexican holiday, but it's also recognized in other cultures around the world, especially those with a large Mexican community. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, has even recognized it as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. That's amazing. I'd love to experience the Day of the Dead festival someday. It seems like a beautiful way to remember and honor our loved ones. I agree, James. It's a unique celebration that embraces death as a natural part of life, which is quite different from many other cultures. Thank you for sharing, Mary. I've learned so much about the Day of the Dead today. You're welcome, James. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Will do, Mary. Thank you again, and have a great day. You too, James. Take care. The Running of the Bulls Festival in Spain Hello Mary, I've heard you went to Spain last summer. Did you by any chance attend the Running of the Bulls Festival? Hi James, yes, I did. It's a unique and exciting event that happens in the city of Pamplona every year. That's interesting. Can you tell me more about the festival? What exactly happens there? Sure, I'd love to. The festival is called San Fermin, and the running of the bulls is just one part of it. 
It's an event where people run in front of a group of bulls that have been let loose on a course of a sectioned off subset of the town streets. That sounds dangerous. Why do people do it? It's a tradition that dates back to the 14th century. Initially, it was a practical thing, the bulls had to be moved from the city outskirts to the bullring where they would be fought in the afternoon. Youngsters would jump among them to show off their bravado. Oh, I see. So, it turned into a festival over time. What else happens during the festival? Apart from the bull runs, there are many other activities like parades, fireworks, and traditional sports. It's a week-long festival, and the whole city is decorated with red and white, which are the colors of the event. That sounds like quite a spectacle. But, aren't there any safety concerns during the running of the bulls? Absolutely, it can be very dangerous, and there have been injuries and even deaths in the past. Before the event starts, there are safety instructions given, and you must be over 18 to participate. It's also advised not to participate if you have been drinking. That makes sense. It's important to be careful. Did you participate in the running? No, I didn't. I watched from a safe distance. It was thrilling enough just to be a spectator. I can imagine. It must have been an unforgettable experience. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the festival? Just that it's a huge part of the local culture. The people of Pamplona take great pride in hosting the San Fermin Festival. While the running of the bulls might be the most famous event, the entire festival is a celebration of the city's heritage. It sounds incredible, Mary. I'd love to see it for myself someday. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome, James. If you ever decide to go, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Just remember to stay safe. Holiday Hi, do you have any plans for the holiday? Yes, I'm going on a trip with my family. What about you? I'm going to visit my grandparents in the countryside. Where are you going? We're going to the beach. I'm excited to swim and play in the sand. That sounds like fun. What are you going to pack for the trip? I'm going to bring my swimsuit, some sunscreen, and a hat to protect my face from the sun. That's a good idea. What else are you going to do on the trip? We're going to go to some restaurants and try different kinds of food. I also want to go on a boat ride. That sounds like a great adventure. What do you like to do on holidays? I like to relax and spend time with my family. What about you? I like to read books and go for walks. Thanks for talking about your holiday plans. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Gas station. Hi Bob, how are you today? Hello Alice, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I wanted to ask you, how do you buy fuel at a gas station in English? It's quite easy, Alice. When you go to a gas station, you can simply say, I would like to buy some fuel, please. I see. And how do I ask for a specific amount of fuel or money? You can say, could I have $20 worth of gas, please, or please give me 10 liters of fuel. That's clear. What if I want to pay with a credit card or cash? You can ask, can I pay with my credit card, or do you accept cash? Great. And if I need help at the gas station, what can I say? You can ask, excuse me, could you help me with the pump, please? Thanks, Bob. That's very helpful. What about when I need to find a gas station? What should I ask? You can ask someone, excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest gas station is? Perfect. And if I want to know if the gas station has a restroom or a store? You can ask, 
does this gas station have a restroom, or is there a store here? Thank you, Bob. You're a great help. Do you have any other tips for me? Just remember to be polite and use, please, and, thank you, when asking for help or making requests. And don't worry, most people are happy to help. Thanks a lot, Bob. I feel more confident now. I'll keep practicing. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your English. Thank you, Bob. Have a nice day. You too, Alice. Take care. At the bakery. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too. Do you want to go to the bakery today? Yes, I would love to. What do you want to eat there? I want to eat a chocolate cake and drink a milky coffee. What about you? I would like to have a grape cookie with a cup of coffee. That sounds nice. We can also meet our friends there. Yes, it's a great idea. We can talk and have fun together. Do you know if anyone has a birthday soon? I think Sarah's birthday is next week. We can celebrate it at the bakery. That's perfect. We can surprise her with a cake and a small party. She will be very happy. Let's invite our other friends too. Yes, let's make a list of who we want to invite. We can invite Tom, Lucy, and Mike. Do you want to invite anyone else? Let's also invite Emma and Sam. They are good friends with Sarah. Great, I will call them and tell them about the surprise party. Thank you. Let's meet at the bakery at 4 p.m. today. Perfect. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you. Gas Station 2 Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. Are you at the gas station now? Yes, I am. I need to get some gas for my car. What kind of gas do you need? I need petrol. My car uses petrol. How much petrol does your car need? I think it needs about 30 liters. How much does petrol cost now? It costs $1.5 per liter. That's not too expensive. No, it's not. I'm happy with the price. How do you pay for the petrol? I use my credit card. It's very easy. That's good. Do you like your car? Yes, I do. It's a nice car. What color is your car? My car is red. Red is a nice color. Yes, I like it a lot. Do you drive to work every day? No, I take the bus to work. Why do you take the bus? It's cheaper and better for the environment. That's true. How long does it take to get to work? It takes about 30 minutes. That's not too long. No, it's not. I can read a book or listen to music on the bus. That sounds nice. What time do you go to work? I go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. What time do you finish work? I finish work at 5 o'clock in the evening. Do you like your job? Yes, I do. I have a good boss and nice co-workers. That's great. What do you do for fun? I like to watch movies and play soccer. 
I like to watch movies, too. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie is The Lion King. I like that movie, too. It's a good story. Yes, it is. Do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie is Toy Story. That's a fun movie. I like it, too. I'm glad you like it. Do you have a favorite soccer team? Yes, I do. My favorite team is Barcelona. I like Barcelona, too. They play good soccer. Yes, they do. It's fun to watch them play. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you. Yes, it was nice talking to you, too. Have a great day. You too, have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye. A discussion on the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China. Hello, Mary. Have you ever heard about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China? Hi James, I've heard about it, but I don't know much. Can you tell me more? Absolutely, it's one of the biggest winter festivals in the world. It takes place in Harbin, a city in northeastern China, every year. It usually starts in January and lasts for about a month, but the exact dates can vary depending on the weather. That sounds interesting. What happens during the festival? The festival features massive ice and snow sculptures. Artists from all over the world come to create these sculptures. Some of them are small, but others can be as tall as a building. Wow, that must be a sight to see. How do they make these sculptures? They use blocks of ice that they take from the Songhua River, which freezes over in the winter. For the snow sculptures, they pack snow into blocks. Then, they carve these blocks into different shapes. That's fascinating. What else can visitors do at the festival? Besides admiring the sculptures, visitors can enjoy ice lantern shows, ice skating, and other winter activities. There are also ice hotels where you can stay. Ice hotels? That sounds cold. Yes, it does. But don't worry, the beds are made of ice but are covered with warm reindeer skins, blankets, and sleeping bags. That's a relief. Is there anything special about the festival's location, Harbin? Indeed, Harbin is known as the Ice City. It's famous for its extremely cold winters, which makes it the perfect place for this festival. Harbin also has strong influences from Russia because it's close to the Russian border. You can see this influence in the city's architecture and food. That's very interesting. I'd love to go there someday. It's definitely worth a visit. Just remember to dress warmly. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for telling me about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival, James. I learned a lot. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too, Mary. Take care. Thrilling adventure in the Amazon rainforest, you won't believe what happened. Hi Emma, did I ever tell you about the time my friend Isabella and I had an incredible adventure in the Amazon rainforest? Hi Jack, no, you didn't. I would love to hear about it. How did you end up in the Amazon? It started as a backpacking trip. We both had always wanted to explore South America, and the Amazon rainforest was on top of our list. It's one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. That sounds amazing. But I can imagine it might be a bit dangerous. Yes, it can be. We had to prepare well and get all the necessary vaccinations. And we also hired a local guide to help us navigate through the dense forest. That seems sensible. 
So, what happened in the forest? One day, while we were trekking, we encountered a group of capybaras, the world's largest rodents. They were surprisingly friendly. Capybaras? That must have been a sight. What else did you see? We saw many birds, insects, and other wildlife. But the most exciting part was when we came across an ancient, abandoned temple hidden deep within the forest. A temple in the Amazon? That's incredible. What was it like? It was partly covered in vines and moss. It looked like it hadn't been disturbed for centuries. We couldn't believe our eyes. That sounds like something out of an adventure movie. Did you go inside? Yes, we did, with our guide leading the way. Inside, there were old stone carvings and what looked like an ancient map. That's astounding. How did you feel in that moment? We were both in awe. It was a reminder of how old and rich the history of that region is. It sounds like an unforgettable experience. Thanks for sharing, Jack. You're welcome, Emma. I'm glad I could share our adventure with you. Thank you, Jack. Your stories are always so exciting. I'm happy you enjoy them, Emma. There's always an adventure to be had if you're willing to look for it. I'll remember that, Jack. Thanks again. No problem, Emma. If you have any more questions about it, feel free to ask. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Jack. You too, have a great day. Sharing the experience of giving a conference in London. Hi Mary, how are you doing today? Hi James, I'm doing well. Thank you. How about you? I'm good, thank you. I just got back from London, where I gave a conference. It was quite an experience. That sounds exciting. What was the conference about? It was about advancements in artificial intelligence and its implications for the future. I had the opportunity to meet some of the leading minds in the field. That's fascinating. What was your presentation about? My presentation was about the ethical considerations in AI development. It's a topic I feel strongly about and was thrilled to share my thoughts with a receptive audience. I can imagine it was well received. How did you prepare for it? Well, I had to do a lot of research. I also rehearsed my speech numerous times to ensure I was confident and clear in my delivery. Preparation is key when it comes to public speaking. Absolutely, I agree. How did you feel giving the presentation? I was a bit nervous at first, but once I got started, I felt more comfortable. It's always inspiring to share your knowledge and engage in discussions with people who share similar interests. That's true. How was the response from the audience? It was very positive. Many people came up to me afterward to discuss my presentation further. Some even expressed interest in collaborating on future projects. That must have felt rewarding. How did you find London? London is a great city, filled with history and culture. I also enjoyed the food and the hospitality of the people. I would definitely love to go back. I'm sure it was a memorable trip. Did you have time for sightseeing? Yes, I did. I visited the British Museum, the Tower of London, and even took a ride on the London Eye. The views of the city from up there were amazing. That sounds like a fantastic experience. Any tips for someone planning to give a conference? Yes, definitely. Start preparing early, understand your audience, and be passionate about your topic. And of course, take some time to enjoy the city you're in. Great advice, James. Thank you for sharing your experience. My pleasure, Mary. It's always good to share experiences and learn from each other. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Have a great day, James.
The Power of Actions, Reaping What You Sow Hi Emma, have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Hello Jack, yes, I've heard it before. It means that our actions determine the results we get, right? Exactly. It's like planting seeds. If you plant apple seeds, you can't expect oranges to grow. The same applies to our actions and behavior. That's a good analogy. So, if we're kind, helpful, and respectful to others, we can expect the same in return? Yes, generally speaking. But it's also important to remember that this concept isn't a guarantee. Sometimes, despite our good actions, we might face challenges or difficult people. That's true, Jack. But even then, doesn't maintaining a positive attitude and approach benefit us in the long run? Absolutely. It helps build character and resilience. Plus, our actions often influence the people around us. If we're consistently kind and respectful, others may start to behave the same way. I like that perspective. I guess it also means that we should be mindful of our actions, even when we're upset or frustrated. Yes, because negative actions can also have consequences. If we're constantly rude or inconsiderate, we're likely to lose friends and miss opportunities. That makes sense. Our actions truly do shape our relationships and experiences. It's like a mirror reflecting our behavior. I couldn't have said it better, Emma. The, you reap what you sow, concept is a reminder for us to be mindful of our actions and to strive to do good. I completely agree, Jack. It encourages accountability and fosters empathy. It's a principle I want to incorporate more in my daily life. Me too, Emma. And remember, every day is a new opportunity to plant seeds of positivity. Indeed, Jack. Let's do our best to sow good seeds. Bearded Lady Goes Viral on Social Media Hi Elizabeth, have you been online today? Hello Charles, yes, I have. Why do you ask? There's something trending on social media that has caught my attention. It's about a woman with a beard who is embracing her uniqueness and has gained a lot of followers. Oh, I think I saw something about that. She seems to be challenging conventional beauty standards and promoting body positivity, isn't she? Yes, that's correct. Her message seems to be resonating with a lot of people. That's a powerful message. I think it's great that she is using her platform to spread positivity and acceptance. I agree. Social media can sometimes focus too much on perfection. It's refreshing to see someone who is genuine and authentic. Absolutely, Charles. It's important to remember that everyone is unique in their own way, and it's our differences that make us special. Yes, and it's courageous of her to share her story. She might be helping others who are also struggling with acceptance. I believe she is. By sharing her story, she's showing others that it's okay to be different and to love yourself just the way you are. It's great to see the positive impact she's having. But I wonder how she deals with negative comments or criticism. I'm sure it's not easy. But it seems like she's focusing on the positive and not letting negativity bring her down. That's a lesson we could all learn from. Definitely. It's a reminder to be kind to one another and respect our differences. Yes, Charles. After all, everyone has their own story and struggles. What we see on social media is just a small part of a person's life. True, Elizabeth. It's important not to judge others based on appearances. And it's equally important to be kind to ourselves and embrace our own uniqueness. I couldn't agree more, Charles. This discussion has been enlightening. It certainly has, Elizabeth. I'm glad we had this chat. Me too, Charles. It's always nice to learn from each other.
Both Charles and Elizabeth agree that the conversation has given them a fresh perspective on body positivity and the power of social media in creating awareness. They look forward to more such discussions and learning experiences. Revolutionizing Your Home, Unveiling Innovations in Kitchen Design Hi Elizabeth, how are you? Hello Charles, I'm fine, thank you. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. I was just reading an article about how innovations in kitchen design are revolutionizing the way we live. Have you noticed these changes? Absolutely, Charles. The advances in technology and design have made a significant impact on our kitchens. For example, smart appliances are becoming increasingly popular. That's true. I've seen refrigerators that can track your groceries and ovens that can be controlled from your phone. Exactly, Charles. And it's not just about the technology. The design and layout of kitchens have also evolved. Open plan kitchens that merge with the living space have become quite trendy. I see. That certainly fosters a more social cooking experience. I've also noticed a trend towards more sustainable kitchen designs. Absolutely. There's a growing focus on using eco friendly materials and energy efficient appliances. Many people are also growing their own herbs in indoor kitchen gardens. That's fascinating. It seems like the kitchen has truly become the heart of the home. What other innovations are making a splash in kitchen design? Another popular trend is the integration of advanced storage solutions. These can range from pull-out spice racks to custom-built pantry organizers. It's all about maximizing space and keeping things tidy. That sounds incredibly practical. It's clear that these innovations are changing the way we interact with our kitchens. Absolutely, Charles. And as technology continues to advance, I believe we'll see even more exciting developments in the future. I can't wait to see what's next. This conversation has certainly opened my eyes to the importance of kitchen design. I'm glad to hear that, Charles. It's always exciting to see how design can improve our everyday lives. Indeed, Elizabeth. I'll definitely keep an eye out for the latest kitchen design trends. Sounds like a plan, Charles. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise, Elizabeth. Have a great day. You too, Charles. Take care. In this conversation, Charles and Elizabeth explored the innovations revolutionizing kitchen design. From smart appliances and open plan layouts to sustainable materials and advanced storage solutions, they discussed the many ways these trends are enhancing our everyday lives. Songkran Festival, Thailand. Hi Patricia, how are you? Hello John, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good, thank you. You know, I was reading about different festivals around the world, and I came across the Songkran Festival in Thailand. Have you heard about it? Yes, I have. It's a very popular festival in Thailand. Do you want to know more about it? Yes, please. What's the festival about? Songkran is the traditional Thai New Year's festival. It's usually celebrated in mid-April, from the 13th to the 15th. The festival is known for its water fights. People throw water on each other as a symbol of purification and washing away the sins and bad luck. That sounds like a lot of fun. Is there anything else that people do during the festival? Yes, there are many other traditions. For example, people visit temples and make merit by offering food to the Buddhist monks. They also clean their homes and their Buddha images with scented water. That's very interesting. So, it's not just about the water fights, but also about religious practices and traditions. Exactly. The Songkran festival is a time for family and religious observances. Many Thai people also use this time to reflect on the past year and to make resolutions for the new year. I see. I'd love to experience this festival one day. 
Is there anything else I should know if I want to participate? Well, remember that Songkran is about respect and goodwill. While it's fun to join in the water fights, it's also important to respect the local customs and traditions. For instance, you should dress modestly and avoid throwing water after sunset. That's good advice. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome, John. I'm sure you'd enjoy the Songkran Festival. It's a wonderful celebration of Thai culture and traditions. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again for telling me about it. Have a great day, Patricia. You too, John. Enjoy your day. Meet the Neighborhood, a journey through friendship and community. Hi Emma, how are you today? Hello Jack, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm great, thanks. I was thinking, we've never really discussed our neighbors. They're an important part of our community. You're right, Jack. We interact with our neighbors quite often. It's nice to know who's living around us. Definitely. Let's start with the Smith family next door. They're very friendly, aren't they? Absolutely. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are always welcoming and their kids, Tom and Lucy, are quite polite. They often help with community events. Yes, they're very involved. How about the elderly couple across the street, the Johnsons? Mr. and Mrs. Johnson are wonderful. Even though they're older, they're very active in the neighborhood. And they have the most beautiful garden. I agree. Their flowers are always a pleasure to see. Then we have the young couple, the Parkers, who just moved in last month. Yes, they seem very nice. They've just started to settle in. I think we should invite them for a community meet and greet. That's a great idea, Emma. We could also introduce them to everyone else in the neighborhood. Speaking of which, we also have the Rodriguez family. They have been here for a long time. Their son, Miguel, is in the same class as my little brother. I've met them a couple of times. They're very warm and friendly. Their son is a good student, I've heard. Yes, he is. We should also mention the neighborhood pets. They're part of the community too. Of course. The Browns have that cute dog, Bella. And the Wilsons have a cat named Fluffy. Our neighborhood is diverse and vibrant. Each neighbor contributes to its charm. We're lucky to have such good neighbors. We really are. It's important to appreciate our neighbors and help each other out when needed. We share a community, after all. Yes, we do. Let's continue to build strong relationships with our neighbors and make our community an even better place to live. I completely agree, Emma. And I look forward to our next neighborhood event. Me too, Jack. It's going to be great. Through their conversation, Jack and Emma discover how much they appreciate their neighbors and the vibrant community they share. They realize that every individual and family brings their unique charm to the neighborhood, enriching it and making it a better place to live. Behind the scenes of a TV news program. Hi Emma, how are you? Hi Jack, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm well, thanks. I've always been curious about what it's like to be a TV news anchor. Could you tell me a bit about it? Of course, Jack. As a news anchor, my primary job is to present the news in an impartial and clear manner. I read the news from a teleprompter, conduct live interviews, and occasionally report from the field. That sounds like a lot of work. How do you prepare for a news broadcast? The preparation starts much before the broadcast. I work with a team of journalists who gather and verify the news. 
Once the news stories are finalized, the scriptwriters write the news scripts for me to read on air. Do you ever get nervous before going on air? Yes, Jack, even with years of experience, I still get a bit nervous before live broadcasts. But I believe a bit of nervousness keeps me alert and helps me perform better. That's interesting. Have you ever made a mistake on air? Everyone makes mistakes, Jack, and news anchors are no exception. I've had my share of bloopers. But the important thing is to keep your composure and move on. I understand. What do you like most about being a news anchor? The most rewarding part is the ability to inform the public about important events. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. And what do you find most challenging? The most challenging part is dealing with breaking news. Things can change rapidly, and we have to adapt quickly. It sounds like a fascinating job, Emma. Thank you for sharing your experiences with me. You're welcome, Jack. I'm glad you found it interesting. I certainly did. Keep up the good work, Emma. Thank you, Jack. I'll do my best. Through their conversation, Jack gets a peek behind the scenes of a TV news program and gains a deeper appreciation for the hard work that goes into each broadcast. As for Emma, she continues to strive for excellence in her role as a news anchor, committed to delivering reliable and timely news to the public. Discussing Loy Krathong and Ipung Festivals in Thailand Hi Patricia, how are you doing? Hello John, I'm well. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I've been doing some research on festivals in Thailand, and I came across Loy Krathong and Ipang. Have you heard about them? Yes, I have. They are beautiful and deeply cultural events celebrated in Thailand. Would you like to know more about them? Absolutely. Could you explain what Loy Krathong is all about? Sure, John. Loi Krathong is a festival celebrated annually throughout Thailand. Loi means to float, and Krathong is a small raft made from banana leaves. People float these Krathongs on a river, canal, or a pond, making a wish as they do so. That sounds beautiful. Is there a specific reason why people float these Krathongs? Yes, there is. The act of floating away the candlelit krathongs symbolizes letting go of all one's hatred, anger, and defilements. People also believe that this will bring good luck and fulfill their wishes. That's fascinating. And what about Ipeng? Is it similar to Loi Krathong? They are similar in some ways, but they have different traditions. Ipeng, also known as the Lantern Festival, involves releasing thousands of lit lanterns into the sky. It is a sight to behold. That must be a mesmerizing sight. Why do people release lanterns into the sky? It's a way to pay respects to Buddha. Also, it's believed that if you make a wish when you release the lantern, it will come true when the lantern disappears from sight. These festivals sound like a great way to experience Thai culture. When do they occur? Loi Krathong and Ipung are celebrated on the evening of the full moon of the 12th month in the traditional Thai lunar calendar, which usually falls in November. I'd love to experience these festivals someday. I'm sure you'd love it, John. They are not just about the beauty and the lights, these festivals bring communities together and represent a time for self-reflection and renewal. Thank you for sharing this, Patricia. I'll definitely add these to my bucket list. You're welcome, John. You won't regret it. Experiencing a different culture's traditions is truly enriching. Indeed, it is. Thank you again, Patricia. Have a great day. You too, John. Take care. Twenty must-know questions and answers for your luxurious stay at the hotel city. Hello, 
Do you have any rooms available for tonight? Yes, we do have rooms available. Would you like a single or a double room? Is breakfast included in the price? Yes, a continental breakfast is included in the room price. What are the check-in and check-out times? Check-in is from 3 p.m. and check-out is by 11 a.m. Do you offer room service? Yes, we offer 24-hour room service. Is there Wi-Fi in the rooms? Yes, all rooms have free high-speed Wi-Fi. Do you have a gym in the hotel? Yes, we have a fully equipped gym that's open 24-7 for our guests. What type of amenities do you provide in the rooms? All rooms come with a flat-screen TV, mini-fridge, kettle, hairdryer, and toiletries. Is there a restaurant in the hotel? Yes, we have a fine dining restaurant and a cafe in our hotel. Can I have an extra bed in the room? Yes, we can arrange an extra bed for a small additional fee. Is the hotel pet friendly? I'm sorry, but our hotel doesn't allow pets. Is there parking available at the hotel? Yes, we provide complimentary parking for our guests. Do you offer laundry service? Yes, we do offer laundry and dry cleaning services. Is there a spa in the hotel? Yes, our hotel has a luxurious spa offering a variety of treatments. Can you arrange a taxi to the airport? Absolutely, we can arrange a taxi for you. What is the cancellation policy? You can cancel your booking free of charge up to 48 hours before your check-in date. Do you provide any special services for honeymooners? Yes, we offer a special package that includes a romantic dinner, champagne, and a room upgrade if available. Are there any tourist attractions near the hotel? Yes, we're conveniently located near several popular tourist spots. Can I request a room with a view? Certainly, we can arrange a room with a view, depending on availability. Do you have any special offers or packages? Yes, we have several packages available. I can provide you with more information if you're interested. Can you recommend a good restaurant nearby? Absolutely, there are several excellent restaurants within walking distance of our hotel. Booking a luxurious London hotel and planning a family trip. Hi Jennifer, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. Hi Michael, sure. I love good news. What's happening? I've just booked a five-day stay at a luxurious hotel in London for our family vacation. That's fantastic, Michael. Which hotel have you chosen? I've booked us into the Ritz. It's one of the most luxurious hotels in London. Wow, that's quite impressive. What amenities does the hotel offer? The Ritz offers a variety of amenities. They have spacious rooms, a fitness center, a wellness spa, and even a Michelin-starred restaurant. That sounds wonderful. When are we going? We're scheduled to leave next month. We'll have five full days to explore London. That sounds exciting. Do you have any plans for our trip? I've been thinking about it. London has so many attractions. We could visit the British Museum, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, and of course, the London Eye. I've always wanted to see the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. Can we include that in our itinerary? Absolutely, I think that's a great idea. We can also explore some of the city's beautiful parks like Hyde Park and Regent's Park. Don't forget about shopping. I'd love to visit Harrods and the markets at Covent Garden. Of course. Shopping is a must. We can also explore London's theatre district. 
Maybe we could catch a show at the West End. I'd love that. I've heard that the food scene in London is amazing too. Yes, it's very diverse. We can try everything from traditional English food to international cuisine. This is sounding like a dream vacation, Michael. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Jennifer. I think it's going to be a trip to remember. Thank you for organizing this, Michael. I'm sure the kids will love it too. I hope so, Jennifer. I want it to be a special experience for all of us. I'm sure it will be, Michael. Thank you for making this happen. You're welcome, Jennifer. I'm excited to share this experience with you and the kids. Me too, Michael. I can't wait. Let's start packing then. Absolutely, let the countdown begin. Preparing for a swimming lesson. Hi Mary, how are you today? Hello James, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I heard you have a swimming lesson this weekend. Yes, that's right. I'm excited, but also a bit nervous. That's completely normal, Mary. Do you know what you need to bring for the lesson? Well, I guess I need a swimsuit and a towel, right? Yes, those are essential. Also, it's a good idea to bring goggles and a swim cap if you have them. They protect your eyes and hair from the chlorine in the pool. I see. I will make sure to bring them. How should I prepare myself for the lesson? Try to eat a light meal about one to two hours before the lesson. You don't want to swim on an empty stomach, but you also don't want to feel too full. That makes sense. What should I expect during the lesson? During your first lesson, the instructor will probably teach you some basic skills, like floating, kicking, and maybe some basic strokes. What if I feel scared or nervous in the water? It's okay to feel that way. Just remember, your instructor will be there to help you. And it's important to tell them if you're feeling scared or uncomfortable. I understand. Is there anything I should do after the lesson? Yes, after the lesson, it's a good idea to stretch your muscles and drink plenty of water. Also, you should rinse off in the shower to remove any chlorine from your skin and hair. Great advice, James. Thanks for your help. You're welcome, Mary. Swimming is a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. I'm sure you'll do great. I hope so. I'll remember all your tips. Thanks again. No problem at all, Mary. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your swimming lesson. Thank you, James. Have a nice day. Being a contestant on a quiz show. Hi Patricia, I heard you're going to be on a quiz show. Is that true? Hello John, yes, that's correct. I'm both excited and nervous. That sounds like an amazing experience. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got selected? Of course. First, I had to fill out an online application. Then, I was invited to take a test to assess my general knowledge. After passing the test, I had an interview with the show's producers. They must have liked me, because I was selected to be a contestant. Wow, that sounds like quite a process. You must be very knowledgeable. How are you preparing for the show? I've been reading a lot and watching previous episodes of the show to get a feel for the type of questions they might ask. I've also been practicing with some quiz games at home. That's a good strategy. What kind of topics do you think you'll be asked about? Quiz shows usually cover a wide range of topics, such as history, science, culture, and current events. I'm trying to brush up on all these areas as much as I can. That's smart. I'm sure you'll do great. 
Is there anything you're particularly worried about? I'm a bit worried about the timed nature of the show. I tend to take my time to think about questions, but on the show, I'll need to respond quickly. That's a fair concern, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Remember, it's just as much about the experience as it is about winning. You're absolutely right, John. I'm mainly doing this for the fun of it. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Definitely, and who knows? You might even win a big prize. That would be wonderful, but even if I don't, I'm sure I'll have a great time. That's the spirit, Patricia. Do you know when your episode will air? Not yet, but I'll let you know as soon as I do. I can't wait to watch you on TV. Best of luck, Patricia. Thank you, John. Your support means a lot to me. You're welcome, Patricia. Enjoy your time on the show. I certainly will, John. Thanks again for your kind words. My pleasure, Patricia. Take care. You too, John. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Patricia. Can't wait to see you on the show. Hello, my friend. How are you today? Hi, Jack. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. What did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the park with my family. We had a picnic. And you? I watched a movie at home. It was fun. What was the movie about? It was about a man who travels in time to save the world. That sounds interesting. Did you like it? Yes, I liked it very much. It was exciting. I want to watch it too. Can you tell me the name of the movie? Of course. The name of the movie is Time Hero. Thank you, Jack. I will watch it soon. You're welcome, Emily. What are your plans for the weekend? This weekend, I will go shopping with my friends. We want to buy new clothes. What about you? I will visit my grandparents in the countryside. I haven't seen them for a long time. That's nice. I'm sure they will be happy to see you. Yes, I think so too. I miss them very much. I hope you have a great time with your grandparents. Thank you, Emily. I hope you have fun shopping with your friends. Thanks, Jack. I'm sure we will. By the way. Hi, can you tell me about your family? Sure. I have a mom, a dad, and a little sister. What about you? I have a mom, a dad, and an older brother. Do you all get along well? Yes, we do. We like to spend time together playing games or watching movies. That sounds like fun. What do you like to do with your sister? We like to play dolls and go to the park together. She's really fun to be around. That's nice. What about your parents? What do they do? My mom is a teacher, and my dad works at a bank. They both work really hard to take care of us. That's great. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a doctor and help people who are sick. That's a noble goal. I'm sure you'll be a great doctor one day. Thanks. What about you? What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a musician and write my own songs. That's cool. Maybe one day we can play music together. That would be awesome. Thanks for sharing about your family. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, can you tell me about your morning routine? 
Sure. First, I wake up and brush my teeth. Okay, what do you do after that? I take a shower and get dressed. What do you like to wear? I usually wear jeans and a t-shirt. What about you? I like to wear skirts or dresses. What do you do after you get dressed? I go downstairs and have breakfast with my family. What do you usually eat for breakfast? I like to have cereal and fruit, or sometimes eggs and toast. That sounds delicious. Do you do anything else before you leave the house? Yes, I pack my bag and make sure I have everything I need for the day. What do you like to bring with you? I always bring my books, my lunch, and my water bottle. That's a good idea. Thanks for sharing about your morning routine. You're welcome. Hi, can you tell me about your school life? Sure. I go to school every day and have classes in different subjects. What subjects do you like? I like math and science. What about you? I like English and art. What do you do at recess? I like to play with my friends and run around outside. What do you like to do? I like to read or draw. Do you eat lunch at school? Yes, I do. I bring my own lunch from home. What do you usually pack for lunch? I like to bring a sandwich, some fruit, and a snack like chips or crackers. That sounds good. Do you have any after-school activities? Yes, I play soccer after school twice a week. What about you? I like to play music and practice singing. Thanks for sharing about your school life. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, can you tell me about your favorite holiday? Sure. My favorite holiday is Christmas. What do you like to do during Christmas? I like to decorate the tree with my family, sing Christmas songs, and open presents on Christmas morning. That sounds like a lot of fun. What do you usually get for Christmas? I like getting books and toys, and sometimes clothes or shoes. That's cool. Do you have any special holiday traditions? Yes, we like to bake cookies and make hot chocolate on Christmas Eve. Yum, that sounds delicious. Do you have any other favorite holidays? I like Halloween too, because I get to dress up in costumes and go trick or treating with my friends. That's a fun holiday. Thanks for sharing about your favorite holidays. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, can you tell me about your winter vacation? Sure. I went skiing with my family on a snowy mountain. Wow, that sounds like fun. What did you do while you were there? We went skiing and snowboarding, and we built a snowman too. Did you take any lessons to learn how to ski? Yes, I took a lesson with a teacher to learn how to ski safely. That's good. Did you have any accidents? No, I didn't. I was careful and followed the rules. That's important. What did you like most about skiing? I liked going fast down the slopes and feeling the wind in my face. That sounds exhilarating. Do you want to go skiing again? That sounds exhilarating. Do you want to go skiing again? That sounds like a great plan. Thanks for sharing about your winter vacation. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have a sister and a brother. How about you? 
I have a sister and a brother too. What are your parents like? My parents are very kind and supportive. They always encourage me to do my best in school and in life. How about your parents? My parents are the same. They're always there for me and they love me no matter what. That's great to hear. What do you like to do as a family? We like to go on hikes and bike rides, and we also like to watch movies and play board games together. That sounds like fun. We like to go on picnics and have barbecues in the park. That sounds great. Maybe we can do that together sometime. Yeah, that would be cool. It's nice to have family to spend time with and make memories with. I agree. Family is important. Definitely. We're lucky to have such great families. Hi there. How's your day going? It's going pretty well, thanks. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great. I've been spending a lot of time with my family lately, and it's been really nice. That's wonderful. What have you been up to with your family? Well, we've been taking care of our pet cat at home. She's such a sweet and lovable animal. Ah, that's great. What kind of things does your cat like to do? My little sister Jane loves playing with her. They have so much fun together, especially with all of the toys and games we have for the cat. That sounds like a lot of fun. What kinds of games do they play together? Jane likes to play hide and seek with the cat, or sometimes they just chase each other around the house. It's always really cute to watch. I bet it is. Having a pet is such a wonderful way to add joy and love to your life. I completely agree. Our cat is such an important part of our family now, and we couldn't imagine life without her. Hey, I wanted to show you something cool. We got a new addition to the family. Really? What did you get? We got a dog. He's super cute and friendly, but he barks at strangers. He's always running around and playing in the backyard. Oh, that's so cute. What kind of dog is he? He's a Labrador Retriever. He's really smart and loves to go for walks, especially down by the beach. That sounds like so much fun. Does he ever get scared or nervous? Not really, he's pretty confident. But if he ever feels unsure, he just comes and cuddles with us. That's so sweet. What's his name? His name is Max. We picked it because it's short and easy for him to remember. Well, he sounds like a great addition to the family. I can't wait to meet him. Hi, have you heard about the retreat center in the mountains where you can learn English and live a healthy lifestyle at the same time? No, I haven't. Tell me more. Well, it's a program where you can stay in a cabin in the mountains and have English lessons every day. And in your free time, you can go hiking, do yoga, and learn about healthy cooking and nutrition. That sounds amazing. Is it just for people who want to learn English or can anyone go? Anyone can go. It's a great way to learn English and also focus on your health and wellness. How long is the program and how much does it cost? The program is a week long and the cost varies depending on the season and the type of cabin you choose. But they offer discounts for early booking and for groups of friends. I'm definitely interested. Do you think the English lessons are suitable for someone at my level? Yes, they have classes for all levels, from beginner to advanced. Plus, the teachers are really experienced and friendly, so you'll feel comfortable and confident. I'm sold. When does the program start and how do I sign up? The program runs year-round, so you can choose the dates that work best for you. And you can sign up online or by phone. 
I can give you the website and phone number if you want. That would be great. Thanks so much for telling me about this program. Hey, do you like swimming? Yeah, I love it. I could swim in a lake, a river, or even in a pool. That's cool. I've never been a great swimmer myself. Really? It's not that hard once you get the hang of it. Do you want me to show you some basic strokes? Sure, that would be great. B, all right, so first let's start with freestyle. You want to keep your face in the water and kick your legs while reaching forward with your arms. Like this. Yes, that's it. Now, let's try backstroke. You want to lie on your back and kick your legs while reaching back with your arms. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of it. Great. You're a natural. Maybe we should go swimming together sometime. That would be fun. Do you have a favorite place to swim? I really love swimming in the ocean. There's something so refreshing about it. Yeah, I've never swum in the ocean before. I bet it's amazing. Yeah, I've never swum in the ocean before. I bet it's amazing. That sounds like a great idea. I can't wait. I really want to learn English, but I don't know where to start. Well, one way to learn English is by practicing and using it in real-life situations. For example, if you go skiing in the mountains during the winter, you can practice speaking English with the ski instructors and other skiers. That's a good idea. But how do I know if I'm saying things correctly? You can start by learning basic grammar and vocabulary, and then practicing with others. You can also listen to English music and watch English movies to get more familiar with the language. What kind of grammar and vocabulary should I learn? Well, for starters, you can learn simple phrases like how are you? And what's your name? And basic grammar structures like subject-verb agreement and simple past tense. That sounds easy enough. Can you give me an example of a sentence I might say while skiing? Sure. You could say, I love skiing in the mountains. It's so beautiful and peaceful. Or can you help me with my technique? I'm having trouble turning. Okay, I think I get it. I'm excited to try speaking English on the ski slopes. Great, I'm excited for you too. Learning a new language can be challenging, but it's also really rewarding. Just remember to practice and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how you learn and improve. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. So, I've been learning English, and I want to try out some new phrases. Can I practice with you? Of course, I'd be happy to help you practice. What's the phrase you want to learn? I want to learn how to say, I have a small, beautiful red car, in English. Okay, great. So, in English, that would be, I have a small, beautiful red car. Wow, that sounds so different from how we would say it in my language. Yeah, English can be a little tricky with its grammar and word order. But once you get the hang of it, it becomes easier. I hope so. Can you break down the sentence for me, so I can understand it better? Sure. So, the subject of the sentence is, I, which is the person who has the car. Then, we have the verb have, which tells us that the person possesses the car. After that, we have the adjectives small and beautiful, which describe the car. Finally, we have the adjective red, which tells us the color of the car. Oh, I think I understand now. Can you use the sentence in a longer conversation, so I can see how it fits in? Sure. Let's say you're talking to a friend about your plans for the weekend. 
You could say, I'm planning to take my small, beautiful red car out for a drive and enjoy the sunny weather. Do you want to join me? Oh, I see. That makes sense. Thanks for your help. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of English grammar. You're welcome. Keep practicing, and you'll get better in no time. Hey, do you have any suggestions for improving my English? Yeah, one thing you can do is watch movies and TV shows in English with subtitles. It can help you improve your listening and reading skills. That's a great idea. Do you have any recommendations for shows or movies? You can try watching Friends or The Simpsons. They're both popular TV shows with lots of humor and everyday conversations. Okay, I'll give those a try. Do I need to watch them with English subtitles or can I watch them in my native language? It's best to watch them in English with English subtitles. That way, you can match what you hear with what you read and improve your understanding of the language. All right, I'll do that. Thank you for the suggestion. No problem. I hope it helps. Hi, I want to improve my English. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is read books, newspapers, and articles in English. It can help you improve your vocabulary and comprehension. That sounds like a good idea. What should I read? You can try reading children's books or magazines, like National Geographic Kids. They're written in simpler English and have pictures to help you understand the content. Okay, I'll look for those. What about newspapers and articles? You can try reading news websites like BBC News or CNN. They have articles on a variety of topics and are written in clear, easy-to-understand English. That makes sense. Do I need to understand every word or can I use a dictionary? It's okay if you don't understand every word. You can use a dictionary to look up unfamiliar words or phrases. The more you read, the more you'll start to understand the language. All right, I'll try that. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your English. Hi, I want to get better at speaking English. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is practice speaking with native speakers. It can help you improve your pronunciation and fluency. That's a good idea, but how can I find native speakers to practice with? You can try joining a language exchange program or finding language partners online. You can also attend English speaking events or clubs in your area. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. What should I talk about with them? You can talk about your interests, hobbies, or daily life. Just try to have a conversation and use the language as much as you can. Got it. But what if I make mistakes or can't think of the right words to say? It's okay to make mistakes. That's how you learn. Just keep practicing and don't be afraid to ask for help or clarification. Native speakers will understand that you're still learning and will be happy to help. Okay, that makes sense. I'll try to find some language partners and practice speaking more. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your English. Hi, I want to improve my English listening skills. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is listen to English podcasts and radio programs. It can help you get used to the sounds and rhythms of the language. That sounds like a good idea. What kind of podcasts or radio programs should I listen to? You can try listening to podcasts or radio shows on topics that interest you, like news, sports, or music. There are also podcasts specifically designed for English language learners, like English as a Second Language or All Ears English. Okay, I'll look for those. But what if I can't understand everything they say? 
It's okay if you don't understand everything. Just try to focus on the main ideas and key words. You can also listen to the same podcast or program more than once to help you understand better. Got it. Should I take notes while I'm listening? That can be helpful, especially if there are new words or phrases that you don't know. You can write them down and look them up later. Okay, I'll try that. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your listening. Hi, I want to improve my English, but I don't know where to start. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is join an English language course or tutoring. It can help you get more structured and focused practice with the language. That sounds like a good idea, but how do I find a course or tutor? You can try searching online or asking at your local language school. There are also many online courses and tutors available, so you can find one that fits your schedule and budget. Okay, I'll look into that. But what if I can't afford to pay for a course or tutor? There are also many free resources available online, like language learning websites or YouTube channels. You can also try Beautiful Dance. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is nine years old, Isabella is twelve years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at nine o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at four o'clock in the afternoon. I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. Hello. My name is Jane. I am 17 years old. I'm studying in high school. I have two sisters. My mother works at the bank. My father is a doctor. We have a beautiful house with a garden. I get up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. I wash my hands and face. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is 9 years old, Isabella is 12 years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at 9 o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. 
After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. I love being in Barcelona because all the people here are really nice and helpful. I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hard-working person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school, but I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I am talkative. I can be selfish but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. I love being in Barcelona. Because all the people here are really nice and helpful. I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hardworking person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school. But I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I'm talkative. I can be selfish but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. English listening and speaking practice. 1. At the restaurant. Hello. How are you today? Hi. I am good, thank you. And you? I am fine. Are you hungry? Yes, I am very hungry. Let's go to a restaurant. Great idea. Do you like pizza? I love pizza. Let's go to a pizza place. Okay. What is your favorite pizza? My favorite pizza is pepperoni. What about you? I like cheese pizza. It is simple and delicious. I agree. Cheese pizza is very good too. How many pizzas should we order? I think one large pizza is enough for both of us. 
Me too. Should we order a salad as well? That's a good idea. I like Caesar salad. Me too. Let's order one Caesar salad to share. Great. I am also thirsty. What do you want to drink? I would like a lemonade. What about you? I will have an orange juice. Okay, let's order our food. Excuse me, waiter. We are ready to order. Sure. What would you like to order? We would like a large cheese and pepperoni pizza, a Caesar salad, a lemonade, and an orange juice, please. Thank you. Your order will be ready soon. Thank you very much. While we wait for our food, let's talk about our day. How was your day? My day was good. I went to the park with my dog. What did you do today? I went to the library to study. I have a big test tomorrow. I hope you do well on your test. Thank you. I hope so too. Our food is here. It looks delicious. Yes, it does. Let's eat. Enjoy your meal. You too. This pizza is very tasty. I agree. The salad is good too. Yes, it is. I am glad we came to this restaurant. Me too. We should come here again soon. Definitely. After we finish eating, let's go for a walk. That's a great idea. We can walk in the park. I like the park. It is peaceful and beautiful. Yes, it is. I enjoy spending time there. Me too. Let's finish our meal and go for a walk. Sounds good. I am enjoying our conversation. Me too. We should talk more often. I agree. It is nice to have a good friend like you. Thank you. I feel the same way. Great. Now let's finish our food and enjoy the rest of our evening. Yes, let's do that. 2. In the city center. Hello. My name is Kevin. How are you? Hi, Kevin. I'm Lisa. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. What are you doing in the city center? I am looking for a bookstore. Do you know where I can find one? Yes, there is a bookstore near the big park. Do you know where the park is? No, I don't know. Can you help me? Of course. First, go straight for two blocks. Then, turn left. The park is on the right side. Thank you very much. Is the bookstore inside the park? No, it is not inside the park. It is next to the park, on the left side. Great. I will find it now. By the way, what can I do in the park? There are many things to do. You can walk, play games, or have a picnic. That sounds fun. What games can I play? You can play soccer, basketball, or badminton. There is also a playground for kids. Nice. I like to play soccer. Do you like to play soccer too? Yes, I love soccer. I play soccer with my friends every weekend. That's cool. Maybe we can play together someday. Sure. That would be great. Do you have a favorite soccer team? Yes, I like Manchester United. How about you? I am a big fan of Barcelona. They have very good players. Yes, they do. I also like their style of playing. Me too. Anyway, have a nice time at the bookstore and the park. Thank you, Tom. It was nice to meet you. Have a great day. You too, Lisa. 
Goodbye. Goodbye, Kevin. 3. At graduation night. Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How about you? Yes, I am. I'm excited. What will you wear? I will wear a blue dress. And you? I will wear a white shirt and black pants. That sounds nice. Will you dance at the party? I think so. I like to dance. Do you like to dance? Yes, I like dancing, too. What is your favorite dance? My favorite dance is the cha-cha. What about you? I like the waltz. It's a beautiful dance. Yes, it is. Are you bringing a friend to the party? No, I'm not. I will go alone. How about you? I'm bringing my cousin. She is nice. That's great. Do you think there will be good food at the party? I hope so. I like to eat. What is your favorite food? I love pizza. What's your favorite food? My favorite food is spaghetti. Do you like spaghetti? Yes, I like it. It's very tasty. I agree. Will there be a band at the party? Yes, I heard there will be a band. They will play music for us to dance to. That's cool. I like listening to music. What kind of music do you like? I like pop music. What about you? I like rock music. It's fun to listen to. I like some rock songs, too. Do you want to meet before the party? Yes, that's a good idea. Where should we meet? Let's meet at the park near the school. Okay, what time should we meet? How about 6 p.m.? That works for me. See you then. Great. See you at the park at 6 p.m. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Hello, Jane. How are you today? Hi, Jack. I am good, thank you. How about you? I am fine, thank you. We are in a luxury caravan. It is very big and nice. Yes, it is. I like it very much. There is a lot of space here. What do you like to do in your daily life, Jane? I like to read books, watch TV, and play with my dog. And you, Jack? I like to play football, listen to music, and go for a walk. Do you like to cook? Yes, I do. I like to cook pasta, soup, and cake. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza. I also like hamburgers and ice cream. Do you have a favorite color? My favorite color is blue. I think it is a beautiful color. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is red. I think it is a strong and happy color. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have one brother and one sister. My brother is older and my sister is younger. And you? I have two younger sisters. They are twins. It is fun to have sisters. Do you like to travel? I love to travel. I have been to many places like France, Italy, and Japan. Where have you been? I have been to England, Spain, and Brazil. I love to see new places and meet new people. What is your favorite place? My favorite place is Japan. I think the culture and food are very interesting. What is your favorite place? My favorite place is Spain. I like the warm weather and the friendly people. Do you have a hobby? Yes, my hobby is painting. I like to paint landscapes and animals. What is your hobby? My hobby is playing the guitar. 
I like to play songs and create new music. Do you like to watch movies? Yes, I love movies. My favorite movie is The Lion King. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Star Wars. I like science fiction and adventure movies. Do you have a favorite animal? My favorite animal is a cat. They are cute and funny. What is your favorite animal? My favorite animal is a dog. They are loyal and friendly. Do you like to go to the beach? Yes, I love the beach. I like to swim, play in the sand, and relax. Do you like the beach? Yes, I do. I like to surf and build sandcastles. Do you like to go to the park? I love going to the park. I like to have picnics and play games. It is a nice place to relax. What about you? I like the park, too. I enjoy playing with my friends and riding my bike. Do you like flowers? Yes, I love flowers. My favorite flower is the rose. It smells so nice. What is your favorite flower? My favorite flower is the sunflower. It is big and bright. Do you like to watch the sunset? Yes, I think the sunset is very beautiful. It makes me feel calm and happy. What about you? I like the sunset too. It is a nice time to be with friends and family. Yes, I agree. We have talked about many things today. It was a nice conversation. I enjoyed talking with you too, Jane. It is nice to share our thoughts. Does this bus go to the downtown shopping center? Yes, it will take us there. Are you sure? I always take this bus. How long does it take to get there by bus? It only takes about 20 minutes. Where do we get off the bus? We can get off right by the food court. We can get off right by the food court. Is there a bus stop close to the shopping center? Yes, it's right in the middle of the shopping center's parking lot. That's convenient. I know, right? Hey! Did you hear about the new restaurant that opened up in town? No, I haven't. What's it called? It's called The Tasting Room. I heard it's amazing. Really? What kind of food do they serve? It's a mix of Italian and French cuisine. I heard their seafood risotto is to die for. Hmm, sounds interesting. Have you been there yet? Yeah, I went there last night with my partner. It was fantastic. How was the service? The service was excellent. Our waiter was very attentive and knowledgeable about the menu. That's great to hear. I'll definitely have to try it out. What about the atmosphere? The atmosphere was really cozy and intimate. It's the perfect place for a romantic dinner. Sounds perfect. I can't wait to try it out. Thanks for the recommendation. Hello, I'm looking for a book about London. Do you sell travel books? Yes, we offer a wide selection including travel books and books about London specifically. Are you looking for something in particular? Yes, I'm planning a few days trip and I want to get information about where to go and which restaurants to try. I see. I would recommend Lonely Planet London for you. It's a comprehensive guide that covers the most popular tourist attractions, restaurants, shopping areas, and more. Okay, is there anything more detailed? I want to learn more about the city's history. Of course, then I would suggest London, the biography. 
the author, Peter Ackroyd, delves into the history of London comprehensively. It covers both the tourist attractions and the social and cultural past of the city. Great, I'll take both. Thank you. You're welcome, happy reading. And have a great time on your London trip. Did you hear about the new cafe that opened up downtown? No, I haven't. What's it like? It's a hip, trendy place with great coffee and pastries. The atmosphere is super cool too. That sounds like my kind of place. Have you tried their coffee yet? Yeah, I stopped by there this morning. The latte was delicious. And their avocado toast is top notch. Avocado toast? I love that stuff. What else do they have on the menu? They have a variety of breakfast items, as well as sandwiches and salads for lunch. And their sweets are all made in house. That sounds amazing. I'll definitely have to check it out. Thanks for the heads up. Hello, do you have any books about Paris? I'm planning a trip there and would love to learn more about the city. Yes, we have a selection of travel books, including books about Paris. Is there a specific area of the city or topic you're interested in? I'm interested in learning about the history and culture of Paris. Can you recommend a book? Absolutely. The Most Beautiful Walk in the World, A Pedestrian in Paris, by John Baxter is a great choice. It's a memoir about the author's life in Paris, and he covers a lot of the city's history and culture as well as his own experiences living there. That sounds perfect. What about a guidebook for the city? For a comprehensive guide, I would recommend Rick Steves' Paris. It covers all the main tourist attractions as well as some lesser-known spots, and includes practical information like maps, transportation options, and restaurant recommendations. Great, I'll take both. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Enjoy your trip to Paris and happy reading. Did you try that new Thai restaurant that opened up on Main ST? No, I haven't. Is it any good? It's amazing. The Pad Thai was the best I've ever had. And the green curry was incredibly flavorful. That sounds delicious. Did they have a good selection of vegetarian options? Yeah, they had a whole section of the menu dedicated to vegetarian and vegan options. The veggie stir-fry was fantastic. That's great to hear. I love Thai food, and I've been looking for a new place to try. Thanks for the recommendation. Hi, do you have any books about New York? I'm going there for the first time and want to learn more about the city. Yes, we have a selection of travel books, including books about New York. Are you looking for a specific area or topic? I'm interested in learning about the main attractions, as well as some hidden gems, that tourists might not know about. For a comprehensive guide, I would recommend Lonely Planet New York City. It covers all the main tourist attractions and also includes some off-the-beaten-path places to explore. That sounds great. Do you have anything about the city's history? Yes, Gotham, A History of New York City to 1898 by Edwin G. Burroughs and Mike Wallace is a great book for that. It's a comprehensive history of New York City up until the turn of the 20th century. Perfect, I'll take both. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Have a great trip to New York and happy reading. Have you been to that new steakhouse that opened up on Park Avenue? No, I haven't. What's it like? It's a high-end place with a sleek, modern design. The steaks are cooked to perfection and the sides are all top-notch. That sounds amazing. 
How was the service? The service was excellent. Our server was very knowledgeable about the menu and made great recommendations. And the wine list is fantastic too. That sounds like the perfect place for a special occasion. Thanks for the recommendation. Excuse me, can I buy a train ticket to London from Paris, please? Of course. Do you want a one way or round trip ticket? One way, please. How much is it? It depends on the date and time you want to travel. Let me check for you. Okay, it looks like the ticket is 100 euros. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. What time does the train leave? The next train to London leaves in two hours at 2 p.m. Does that work for you? Yes, that's perfect. Can I pay with cash or do I need to use a credit card? We accept both cash and credit card. Which one would you prefer to use? I have cash, so I'll pay with that. Great. Here's your ticket. Don't forget to keep it with you and show it to the conductor when you board the train. Thank you very much. This was very helpful. You're welcome. Have a safe and enjoyable trip to London. Hi, my name is Jane. Nice to meet you. Hi Jane, I'm David. Nice to meet you too. So, where are you headed? I'm also going to London. I'm visiting some family there. That's cool. Have you been to London before? Yes, I have. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. I've never been there before. What are some of the things you like to do there? Well, there are a lot of great museums and historical landmarks, like the British Museum and the Tower of London. And the food is really good too. Have you tried fish and chips before? No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. You have to try it when you get to London. And the nightlife is also really vibrant. There are a lot of great restaurants and clubs to check out. Sounds like there's a lot to do and see there. I'm really excited to explore the city. Definitely. And the train ride itself is really beautiful too. Did you see the countryside as we were passing through? Yes, it was amazing. The rolling hills and green fields were so picturesque. It's one of the things I love about train travel. You get to see so much of the country that you wouldn't see otherwise. I couldn't agree more. This has been a really great trip so far. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Welcome to London. British Museum Visit So, what brings you to the British Museum? I've always wanted to visit the museum and see all the amazing artifacts and exhibits. And you? Same here. I've heard a lot about the museum and wanted to see it for myself. It's definitely one of the top attractions in London. Have you seen the Rosetta Stone exhibit yet? Not yet. I was thinking of checking it out later. Have you seen it? Yes, it's really fascinating. It's amazing to think about the history behind it and how it helped us understand ancient languages. That sounds really cool. I'll have to make sure I check it out. What other exhibits have you seen? I've seen the Egyptian mummies exhibit and the ancient Greek statues exhibit. They're both really interesting. I saw the Greek statues exhibit earlier. They were really beautiful. I also like the exhibit about the history of money. I haven't seen that one yet. I'll have to check it out. Definitely. There's so much to see here, it's hard to see everything in one visit. I agree. But that's what makes it so amazing. 
the British Museum is a treasure trove of knowledge and history. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm really glad we met here and got to share this experience together. Me too. It's been really nice talking to you. Have a great rest of your visit. You too. Take care. This has been such an amazing day at the British Museum. I can't believe we saw so much history and culture in one place. I know, right? It's incredible how much there is to see here. So, where are you headed now? I'm going to my hotel near Trafalgar Square. How about you? I'm staying in the same area. Do you want to walk there together? Sure, that would be great. This is my first time in London, so I'm excited to see more of the city. London is a beautiful city with so much history and culture. Have you seen any of the historical sites yet? No, not yet. Do you have any recommendations? Well, there's Buckingham Palace, where the Queen lives. And Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament are also really iconic. And of course, there's the Tower of London and the Tower Bridge. Wow, those all sound really amazing. Which one is your favorite? I really love the Tower of London. It has a lot of history and it's such a unique building. But they're all worth seeing. I can't wait to see them all. It's incredible how much history and culture there is in London. Yes, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. London has so much to offer, from its museums to its parks to its food. It sounds like an incredible place. I'm really glad I came to visit. I'm glad you did too. London is a city that you'll never forget. Visit the Tower of London, ticket line. Hi, I'm Isabella. Are you also here to visit the Tower of London? Yes, I am. My name is Kevin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Kevin. Have you been here before? No, this is my first time here. How about you? This is my second time visiting the tower. It's an amazing place with so much history. That's what I've heard. I'm really excited to see it for myself. You won't be disappointed. The tower has a lot of interesting exhibits and artifacts. Have you heard about the crown jewels? Yes, I have. I can't wait to see them. I heard they're really beautiful. They definitely are. But the line to see them can get pretty long, so make sure to plan your visit accordingly. Thanks for the advice. Do you have any other recommendations for things to see while we're here? Well, I really enjoyed the White Tower exhibit. It has a lot of interesting weapons and armor from different time periods. And the medieval palace is also really cool. That sounds great. I'll definitely have to check those out. Thanks for the suggestions. No problem. Oh, it looks like the line is moving. We should be able to get our tickets soon. Great. I'm really looking forward to this visit. Thanks for talking with me. Of course. It's always nice to meet fellow travelers. Enjoy your visit to the tower. Healthy weight loss. Hey, have you ever thought about trying to lose some weight? Yeah, I have, but I never know where to start. It all seems so complicated. I used to feel the same way, but I've been doing some research and there are actually some really simple things you can do to get started. Really? Like what? Well, for starters, you can make small changes to your diet. Try to eat more fruits and vegetables, and less processed foods. That makes sense. I do eat a lot of junk food. And you can also start drinking more water. It'll help you feel full and keep you hydrated. 
Okay, that sounds doable. And as for exercise, you don't have to start with anything too intense. Even just taking a short walk every day can make a big difference. I like walking. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah, and you can always gradually increase the distance or try some other activities, like swimming or cycling. I never thought of that. Thanks for the advice, I'm definitely going to try it out. You're welcome. Just remember, it's all about making small, sustainable changes. Don't try to do too much too fast, and be patient with yourself. You'll get there. The benefits of regular exercise for healthy weight loss. Hey, have you been keeping up with the walking like we talked about? Yeah, I have been, but I'm not seeing a lot of results yet. Well, weight loss isn't always immediate. But one thing that can help is doing some more focused exercise, like strength training or cardio. I don't really like going to the gym or anything like that. That's okay, you don't have to. There are plenty of other options. You could try a dance class, or join a sports team, or even just do some bodyweight exercises at home. I don't know, that all sounds kind of intimidating. It can be at first, but the benefits are so worth it. Regular exercise not only helps you lose weight, but it also boosts your mood, strengthens your bones and muscles, and can even improve your sleep. Really? I had no idea it had so many benefits. Yeah, it's amazing what a little exercise can do. And you don't have to do it alone, either. You can find a workout buddy or join a class to make it more fun and motivating. Hmm, maybe I could try a dance class. I've always wanted to learn how to salsa. There you go. The point is to find something you enjoy, so that it doesn't feel like a chore. You'll be surprised at how quickly you start to see and feel the positive effects of regular exercise. You're right. I'm going to look into some dance classes today. Thanks for the encouragement. Of course, that's what friends are for. Let's support each other and keep each other motivated to reach our health goals. The harms of irregular and unhealthy nutrition. Hey, how's your healthy eating going? It's been tough. I keep craving junk food and sweets. I know it can be hard, but it's important to remember that those things are really bad for your health. I know, but they're just so delicious. I get it, but think about how you feel after you eat them. Do you feel energized and healthy, or sluggish and tired? Yeah, I guess you're right. I always feel kind of gross after I eat a lot of junk food. And it's not just about how you feel in the moment. Eating too much junk food and processed food can have long-term effects on your health, like heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. That's true. I really need to start being more careful about what I eat. It's okay to indulge every now and then, but the key is moderation. Try to focus on eating more fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. And make sure you're drinking plenty of water and getting enough sleep. That all sounds good but I'm not sure I can give up my favorite snacks completely. You don't have to. You can still enjoy treats in moderation, like having a small piece of chocolate or a single cookie. Just don't make them a regular part of your diet. Okay, that sounds doable. Thanks for the advice, I really need to start taking better care of myself. Of course. We can support each other and stay on track together. Remember, it's all about making small, sustainable changes over time. You've got this. The effects of camp on healthy life. I had so much fun camping this weekend. It was so great to get out into nature and away from the city. I've never been camping before. 
I'm not really sure I'd like it. You might be surprised. Camping has a lot of benefits for your health and well-being. Really? Like what? For starters, being out in nature can help reduce stress and improve your mood. It's also a great way to get some exercise, whether you're hiking or just setting up camp. I guess that makes sense. But what about all the bugs and dirt and stuff? Yeah, it can be a little uncomfortable at times. But it's also a good opportunity to challenge yourself and get out of your comfort zone. And it's all worth it for the experience and the sense of accomplishment. Hmm, I never thought of it that way. Maybe I'll give it a try sometime. You should. It's a great way to unplug from technology and connect with nature. And who knows, you might even discover a new hobby. That does sound nice. Thanks for the encouragement. Anytime. Let me know if you want to plan a trip together sometime. I'd love to share the experience with you. The Great Beauty of the Pyramids in Egypt I just got back from a trip to Egypt, and the pyramids were absolutely amazing. I bet they were. I've always wanted to see them in person. You really should. They're so much more impressive than any picture or video could capture. What was the most amazing thing about them? It's hard to say. Just the sheer size and scale of the pyramids is incredible. And the fact that they were built so long ago, without modern technology, is mind-boggling. That's true. I can't imagine how they were able to build something like that without cranes or bulldozers. And the way they've stood the test of time is also really impressive. They've been around for thousands of years, and they're still standing tall. That's amazing. What was it like to be there in person? It was honestly a little overwhelming. The pyramids are just so big and imposing, and there's a kind of energy around them that's hard to describe. I can only imagine. I definitely need to put a trip to Egypt on my bucket list. You won't regret it. The pyramids are truly one of the wonders of the world, and an experience you'll never forget. Taxi driver and customer. Good morning, where would you like to go? Hi, could you take me to Buckingham Palace, please? Sure thing. It's a bit of a busy area today, so it might take us a little while to get there. No problem, take your time. We're almost there now. Buckingham Palace is on the right. Great, thank you.